Oh, no. oh, hi. How you doing? Hey there. Hi there. Oh, there. It's me. Bear. Gen X Jim. Look who I found. He was wandering around the streets. Didn't know who he was. Had a had an airplane. You have a he was asking for change. People were ignoring him. They thought he was a scam. He was going, I just need a dollar to get to the airport. But I gave him a dollar, and here he is. Woo! Hello, Armandric. Or say, should I say merci de la visite? And uh, Coco Shuko Papashango. That name, man. So I got a two dollar. Yeah, okay, don't be an ass. No one likes a braggart. Uh, from the Hill sent us two dollars earlier to say have a good live stream. So, this is a four color cafe special edition, and we're just going to be hanging out. There's no agenda. There's no oh, wait, there's an agenda for one thing and one thing only. If you have been watching uh, the live plays I do for Palladium, you've seen if you say hey, Hungar, are you still in the hospital, Hungar? What's going on, man? Uh, you may have seen the Monday nights one, the uh, Kodak, uh, the uh, company of Sashire game. And in the first episode, if you saw it, I'm sorry if you didn't, I'm going to spoil it because we're on episode three by now. Um, I don't know if you saw, but one of the characters got killed at the climax of the first episode, which was a shock and an odd everything. Well, one of our viewers is a guy who goes by the handle Triax Core, and he's been taking uh, transcripts of the episodes and then re putting some notes in them and then using AI to write them up as summaries. Well, he was so touched and moved by the death of April's character, uh, Lorfariel, the city elf who wanted to be a knight, and then defending her, her, her love and friend's honor got killed in that fight against uh, the, the beast. He actually used AI, which I have no issue with, to generate a song about her. It's a heart unshielded, a song for Lorfariel. And before I start playing it, which I am, we're going to mute our mics here so you guys don't hear us. And you just hear the song. It's not a long song. Two minutes, 46 seconds. Uh, if you like it, the link is down in the show notes. And I'll throw it in the chat here in a minute as well. Go throw him a buck. You know what I mean? Like, the guy did an amazing thing. And he really, like, this is fandom at its best. So here we go. We're going to listen to this. And we're going to mute our mics. And hopefully everyone should be able to hear it. Rain falls soft and dark sides night, a night in armor tarnished bright. For love she stood, for love she bled, her heart a shield by honor led. Lord Fariel, name like whispered prayer, a beacon lost, a spirit rare. The rain may weep. The city sigh, but valor echoes where brave souls die. Steel met steel and shadowed fray. Her oath, a vow she could not betray. Each strike a prayer. Each blow a plea, a selfless act for all to see. Lord Fariel, may my whispered prayer, a beacon lost, a spirit rare. The rain may weep, the city sigh, but valor it goes where great souls die.
So yeah, that's fucking amazing. Like that blew my mind uh, to have a stupid game that we're playing for fun encourage someone to create art. And yeah, you can complain about AI and he uses Sono for the music and all that, whatever. You can complain all you like. But the point is, is that this person sat down, took something and turned it into something else. And it is beautiful. I love it. And I went and I threw him a buck. And if you want to go throw him a buck, I'll put the link down in the chat below and you can download your very own MP3, FLAC, WMV, whatever it is you want to have. Um, but uh, this guy is amazing. Like he's he's so into the campaign setting. He's transcribing all the games set in the West now. He's really into it. Like it's it's really good. And this this blew me away. And April and uh, Jess, we haven't seen Jess' reaction. Jess Jess. So Jess has had a hard time. She's not a ex super experienced role player. Mm -hmm. And her character Raven was the best friend, and they loved each other in that un you know, unspoken love. Uh, and it was her that Lorfario was protecting. She stood up as her champion, and that's how she got killed for shit that Raven had done. So it's been really fun watching Jess try and play her character and deal with this loss and deal with this tragedy. So when he read when she read the write-up he did at the session, all her emotions came back, and she was like, oh, my God. So I can't wait to see how she reacts to this. April was like, oh, my God, I love this. You know, I can't wait to see what Jess's reaction is. But, I mean, this is, this is the kind of stuff, this is the age we are in now, you know? Nerds being equalized. We are able to be as creative as we want to be. We are able to do whatever we need to do to make ourselves express ourselves, to bring our ideas to light. Yes, you can argue about the loss of work for artists. Yes, you can talk about all that stuff you want. But at the end of the day, there's still some amazing stuff being created. And it's just the next step of the artistic revolution. Just like I was around when Photoshop came out. And artists were proclaiming anyone who did digital art was a fake and a fraud and they should never use Photoshop. It's cheating. And now they all have Wacom tablets. You know what I mean? So like everything else, we're just going to keep going. I agree, King Eric. Jess is doing an amazing job. For someone who's not a super experienced role player, she's doing a great job. Anyway, I just wanted to share that. I thought that was really cool. Uh, guys, go throw them a buck if you can. And instead of super chatting me tonight, go throw some money at this guy and, uh, you know, let him see the appreciation. And maybe he'll do more crazy stuff for us, you know? Oh, wow. Hang on, sorry. Sorry, I just got a message I got to respond to. Uh, okay, wait a minute. So there you go. So that's that was my one. Sorry, Lynn, you have, sorry, you have done something on Lynn? We all want to know what the message is. Uh, it's private. I'm sorry. It's it's a private message. From... <laughs> any, any thoughts on that piece of music we just listened to? I think that was excellent. I think that was mm. excellent. And I, you know, regarding the the AI thing that you touched on, I, I I don't think that took money from any. I don't think that took money from anyone because I don't know that this fan would have contracted with a musician to write the song and perform. This is is literally something someone doing something effectively for themselves and their friends that, that that they just wouldn't have done if they didn't have the tool to do it. It simply wouldn't exist. I don't think right. it took anything away from 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 anyone, at least as far as I'm aware. Yeah, exactly. And that, and that's I'm good with that. I'm fine with that. Uh, I look at it as fanfic. You know what I mean? It, right. It's just fan fiction or fan art, you know what I mean, whatever you want to call it. There will always be people who will complain. There will always be people who will say no. And you know what? They're more than welcome to. Uh, but ultimately, I think um, I think this is the way we're heading, whether you like it or not. So you can you can you can rage against the machine, or you can accept that the machine is here, and you can either make it work for you, or it will work against you. You figure it out. But there you go. So what's been, where you been, Len? We haven't seen you in a long while. What the hell? Where you been? Just life stuff, family vacation, work. Scott has been uh, a little bit busy. Um, so honestly, nothing too thrilling and exciting. Mm -hmm. um yeah just uh just family stuff this is this stuff here is obviously fun but uh you know when real life comes knocking sometimes i gotta answer the door so uh <laughs> that's about it so but i had a little free time today plus i figured you know what it's not like we've got larry elmore or tim cask or anyone yeah. like that it's not it's not like we've got people who i've fanboyed over for 40 years you know wh why would i be on one of those shows no why so why would you do time, that right so i figured this time we've got no one 
So I'm like, sure, that's that that'll be that'll be the one I'm that'll be the one I'm available for. So yeah. that's your speed. Got that it. was my plan. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fair. That's fair. That that's fair. You can't uh, you can't argue that. Conversely, I would have probably embarrassed myself more than normal uh, had I been on with with Cask or with Larry Elmore. So there's that. Well, there is that, but at the yeah. same time, Squirrel, I just sent you a message on Discord, buddy. Uh, yeah, but dude, you, listen, they were so chill. Steve Winter was chill. Tim Cask was chill. Larry Elmore was chill. Tim Cask had me fucking crying. Like, oh my god! Like he is, he is the OSR as a human. You know what I mean? Like it was so <laughs> funny. Uh, and he, and it, the best was when he started talking about Critical Role. He started, I don't know why people these half-assed actors you want people to watch them play D and D, and I'm just like, mm hmm. Yeah, or sorry, half-ass failed actors. So I reminded Oof. him after I, I cleared it up by saying, "Well, as a whole-ass successful actor, let me tell you." Yeah, it's just because <laughs> you know, he was kind of like the get off my lawn of D and D. It was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. It was absolutely amazing, man. <laughs> I was absolutely blown away by his his energy, <laughs> his his wit, his his everything. He was just great. He was just great. And since watching the Elmore thing, I've been trying to find the Elmore image that was my my number one Elmore image, which is not the classic dragon on the red box. It's not. It's got an Elmore lady in it, of course, and uh, it's uh, that's my number one. It's my number one. I think it was from a Dragonlance thing, but I just I haven't been able to find it. But there's actually three characters in it, and they're sort of standing on a cliff overlooking want to say a waterfall or something mm -hmm. um and one of them is the sort of classic elmore curly blonde hair stevie looking nick stevie nicks looking paladin you know yeah, what yeah, you know yeah. exactly what the image I'm i know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the stevie uh, but, but i haven't been able to find it fair 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 it was in a calendar right. though i had it in a dragon lance calendar a hundred thousand years ago Yeah. Uh, so what else is going on with you? What's up with par what's up with prowlers and paragons and the the things I hack by? What <laughs> well, prowlers and paragons right now. Uh, a buddy of mine who did work on the original Bill the Evil Bunny Keys is working on a a sub uh, like a small uh, setting book called Fun House, which mm. is sort of half. Um, we might be having him on as a guest uh, when his uh, Kickstarter goes. Oh, that would know. be that would be excellent. And and also, Bill the Evil Bunny Keys might be writing an adventure for Heroic. Fantabulous! As is, as is Chuck Rice, who's going to be doing the intro adventure in the core book for us, and a guy named Darren, last name Drayden. He's written a few things as well. He's doing Fantastic. the adventure for us as well. So there we go. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. So he's got the Fun House coming out in a little bit. Nice. Um, which is a kind of a unique setting. And hey, Squirrel. Hey. Well, Mike, I was trying to forget Black Star, but then you went and brought it up. So I guess I'm <laughs> going to have to bring up Black Star. Man. What's <laughs> Black Star doing, Len? Uh, well, let me let me get go in order. So the for the buy this axe, we're actually I'm actually working on a. A few people have asked for a kind of com combination of the core buy this axe and the compendium. So we're working on a, maybe not a second edition, maybe a 1.5 that combines, condenses, uh, adds some new rules and stuff like that. And so sure. that's in the works. And I actually like this version better than the original, even though they're 98% the same. Yeah. Okay. And as for Black Star, the next book on that one is being worked on as well. It is evolving a little bit, though. It was going to oh, be really? a semi-setting book that was sort of in the vein of Alien Legion, sort of a soldiers in space kind of thing. But okay. There's a lot of stuff in the book, and it's there's so much stuff like items and gear and weapons that it's kind of turning almost into a Marvel's uh, what do you call the weapons locker? Oh, it's yeah, 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 turning into something like that. So it might oh. actually take on a different name, it might actually be released under something called like the Midnight Zocalo. Um, and it might be an actual like stuff. Book, like items and equipment and things like that. Hey, Dungeon Damsel. Uh oh, Bunny's here. Everybody behave. Bunny's here. Hi, Bunny. <laughs> I got the message. Thank you. That looks. Can I show it, Bunny? Can I show? Am I allowed? You tell me if I'm allowed to show that. I'll show it to everybody. 
Okay, well, someone's racist phone just went off. What? It's twenty twenty four, sir. Chop chop pop sing. <laughs> there we go. What's up, Dale? How's your internet tonight? Hopefully better. Hopefully. Well, we'll we'll see. Yeah. Did you hear? Did you play the song that the guy linked for us that I sent you guys the link for? Yeah, you did. You liked it, eh? Yeah, it, it was. It was not bad. It was not bad. Uh, there, there goes your internet doing its internet shit again. Here's a piece of advice to you because you have such garbage internet. Turn off everything else that's using the internet right now. Like no browser windows, no cell phones, no Xboxes, nothing. Free up your bandwidth. So I, I have to turn off my children. I'm sorry, what was that, Dale? I have to turn off my children. Yes. <laughs> Highly recommend yeah. that. I, sir, I would Funny, love to. I, I'm going to try to figure that out right now. Money, can I show the logo or not? You tell me and I'll, if you say no, I won't show it to everybody, but if you say yes, I'll show it to everybody. So what's up, Squirrel? How you been, man? Good, good. I haven't, um, seen, I haven't seen you in a couple hours. Yeah, right? Jeez, I'm like two ships passing in the night. I mean, mm. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm doing well. Like I said earlier on uh, Ye Old's channel, I'm out of town working and Got off work early, and here I am playing around on the internet. Well, there you go. So Z Bunny's doing a mimic pin thing on uh, <laughs> backer kit right now, and so she did a, a Zenith logo mimic. A Zenith shield is a mimic, and I think that's just absolutely fantastic. Bunny, give me the link for your backer kit on Discord, and I'll pump it out to everybody. Because, you know, while yeah, I'm not cool. pimping my shit right now, I'll happily pimp everybody else's. That's, that's yeah, cool. It's it's that as a mimic, and now I want that as a T-shirt. <laughs> I know, right? I'm just saying, give me give me that high res, and I'll make a T-shirt out of it, and I'll send you one, Bunny. Oh, it is high res. Oh, I could make a T-shirt out of this, Bunny. Bunny, can I make a T-shirt out of this, and I'll send you one? Oh my God, that's that would make such a cool shirt. Oh my God, that would that would be neat. Yay! Send me the link. Send me the link. Send me the link. Send me the link. Well, I'll, I'll go find the link since I know you're at a game right now. Uh, backer kit mimics spell that right, you dumb fuck. Okay, I will. Thanks. All right, here you go, guys. I'm gonna throw the link up in the chat for you all, and we'll take a quick look at the page because it deserves taking a quick look at. So, basically, there's a whole bunch of them that are doing Pintopia 2, where they're basically doing various types of enamel pins. Bunny chose to do mimics, and she's basically got all these really awesome pins that you can go get. You can buy Mimics basically. And she even has an add-on now, I believe. If you got 200 bucks in your pocket that you just, you know, don't know what to do with, you can get a custom Mimic. I think she meant, yeah, there it is. 200. Sticker. Create a Mimic. Oh yeah, and she has stickers and all kinds of crazy shit going on. So if you yeah. like Mimics, if you look, look at these. Look at these things. These things are so cool, man. Look at these. These are beyond cool. And yeah, that's fun. Yeah, Len's running with his credit card to the computer as we speak. Still hasn't backed heroic, but he'll go back. He'll go back this, won't he? That's all right. That's all right. You know, some people, you know. But there you go. So if you like enamel pins, you like those gold glitter stickers with prismatic features and all that fun stuff. I lots totally of options. Heroic. For you. <laughs> you totally backed heroic. I must have missed when you did. Thank you. I appreciate the love. Of course, I'm going to back heroic. Oh, oh, oh. He's going to. He didn't say he did. He says he's gonna. <laughs> I want a mimic Zenith T-shirt. What are you talking about, FMD? I absolutely want a mimic T-shirt. No, it's not. I checked. Is mimic copyright by TSR? No, you can't. So you can't copyright common use terminology. That's the problem. And Watsy's going to learn this the hard way when they basically have to learn the lesson Marvel learned. When Ella, comma, uh, Ella, the elementals from Comico had a character called Thor show up and he had a hammer and red hair. And they're like, You can't have Thor in your comics. We have Thor in our comics. And they're like, You don't own Norse mythology, dumb fuck. And that pretty much put an end to that. So I can have a character called Wolverine in the Zenith universe. He can't be five foot two Canadian, have a healing factor, a berserker rage, and adamantium claws. But I can have a dude called Wolverine. He just has to be different because Wolverine. So DC figured this out the right way for the most part. DC goes Blue Beetle, and therefore they can copyright the shit out of that, right? Uh, but then they did Vixen, 
And uh oh, they didn't do that. They didn't. So it's not like Red Vixen or something. So Vixen you can have too. So there's all these things you can do. Stuff I learned while building superhero universes and trying to produce a comic. I learned a lot of crazy shit. My sticker yep. provider does not do that. Are there scratch and sniff stickers? Oh, hmm. oh geez. King oh, Eric, boy. I don't even know what to do with you on that one. Anyway, so there you go. So go give your money to the band camp. Link down below. Go give your money to Bunny. Link in the chat. Did I put the link in the chat for her thing? Yeah, it's there. Just scroll back a bit and you'll find it. Go give them all your money. And then, okay, just because Brian will yell at me if he hears this later, if you feel like backing a superhero game that's already funded and you want to help us reach cool stretch goals, go back your own. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. I, uh, I spent some time after work today writing up another one of the so we have an appendix on powers and we have all the stuff in powers in this appendix on the back of the book right so one of the choices i made with the book was anything that had verbose descriptions like talents powers things like that in the character creation chapter there's a little summary of what it is and then for more see appendix blah like yeah. the old marble game did and when you go back to the back of the book everything's in its appendix and one of them is on superpowers and it's a lot of expanded rules on superpowers pre-made superpowers things like that I just spent the better part of two hours after work dredging up a rough copy of how to do powers the heroic way. So it explains and it gives sample powers. And it's got a template of you need to answer these questions about the power and stuff like that. And I've just handed it off to Dale and not Dale Shane and said, make this sound right and remove all my double my double speak where I say the same thing over. So hopefully that'll be nice. So you know, lots of stuff coming for the games. Looking good. We got three adventures coming. We got seven miniatures STLs coming. Uh, full color book uh 12 villains um because i'm gonna go with villains i think instead of doing a mix of heroes and villains it's gonna be villains and we're gonna call the book villainous and that'll be fine oh yeah and then there's all the characters you guys bought in for who are also gonna get written up and put in that so that book's gonna be huge at the end of the day but you guys are just getting a one page you're not getting a full treatment my god who bankrupt me anyway so there we are yeah well, i'm glad it's going well i'm happy for you i'm excited well, what's it up for now to just under twenty four thousand. It's about twenty three nice. something. Twenty three, twenty three three hundred and something right now. I think. I think. I don't know. I haven't looked in a while. Let me look. I'm, we're in the mid part where everything goes slow. Twenty three thirty. Twenty three three thirty five. Two hundred and ninety two backers. We've had fifteen cancellations for a total of almost two thousand dollars of cancellations, which hurt. That's actually but, not right. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, How fun. cool would it be to win the lotto and just sneaky drop like seventy five thousand on your Kickstarter? <laughs> Why would I like, drop? What, what? What the? What the? You know, just yeah, anonymously if, drop seventy five. If, if someone did that, I would probably shit myself. You know, you know, they take a twenty five dollar PDF and then they do the thing where they can add any amount that they want for the donation. So it's a right. seventy five thousand dollar PDF. You're like. Bah, oh. If you see a seventy-five thousand dollar Kickstarter thing, and, and I will probably not be on for a little while. <laughs> yeah. I, I can honestly say I might just take a couple years off my day job. You know what I mean? Hello. And just work on heroic full time yeah. for two years straight. Yeah, that that would be the day. Adventures, comics, you name it. That yeah, that's the only thing. Like, like, can I just compliment understand. Dale and see how young and spry he looks with his hair and goatee without any gray in it at all? Yeah, it's amazing. It's like he used uh, just, just for, for men, men works well. Yeah, just for men works yeah. well. So we, I we used to it. have not be have... old and decrepit also helps. Yeah, fuck you. He's, old <laughs> I'm, I'm he's, 53. Back. he's 53. He's just full of shit. Um, <laughs> anyway, I think we're all 53, aren't we? Oh, you're 54. Oh, excuse me, senior. Yeah. When's your birthday? What month? November, baby. I'll be 54 in July. Yeah, when are you 54? September. September, squirrel? Fe uh, February. February. Oh, you just turned 53, you fucking spring chicken, you. <laughs> there will be no cosplay stretch goals. Thank you very much. Crazy <laughs> people. Life size costumes at twenty four thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's that's how much that costs. You know, do you want a book? Do you want a game book? Like I literally at one point in time was thinking about turning off the extra art uh, add on and the extra art level because we've got over thirty fucking characters to do now, and it's just like you know maybe I need to have the artists focused on the book first and then that stuff second. So 
maybe we don't want to add more to it, but <clears throat> we'll see. <laughs> Stretch goal. Bunny wears skin tight things. Is that like skin tight things as in the movie The Thing? Like you just wear like so you become a human mimic? Is that what you're saying, Bunny? Hey, stretch goal. I don't wear skin tight things. Oh my god, no, no. Stretch goal, we prevent him from wearing skin tight right, things exactly. and yeah. 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 <laughs> Anyway, so Dale, what's up with you? What's new and interesting? I work for the city. <laughs> Uh, you ever seen uh, Days and Confused? Yes. When he's buying the booze and he's like, you know, working for the city and you know, trying to put some money in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, there I'm, we go. I'm writing up several proposals that, that are going before uh, city council. When are they going before city council? Yay. This month. Cool. I still need the, you to finish those missing pieces of the Callingsdale. I, I, I know. I know. I'll have them tonight. Yeah, sure you will. As soon as I saw that, yep, sure you will, Dale. Absolutely, I believe you. Dale has never delivered a piece of writing on time unless I harass him daily for it. No talented writer ever has. No, um, so I have a tiny little bit of wiggle room, so just to let you know, if you need help with anything, you, sir, I love like a brother, but your prices are beyond my scope. I hate to break the news <laughs> to you. We had the we had that conversation a couple years back. It's like, I can't afford you. I wish I could afford you. <laughs> I wish I could afford the great and mighty Len Pimentel. We'll, we'll so, talk offline. We'll talk offline. Oh, will we? Will we? Oh, now that all your friends See, are working for me, huh? Oh, I get it. <laughs> See, Len, oh, oh. Yeah, the buddy system here. Oh, okay, okay. Actually, you know what? We could talk. How's, how's your adventure writing skills? Have you ever written an adventure? Uh, oh. One or two. Because I can't write writing one for the evil bunny for his Kickstarter. Oh, interesting. Sure. Well, maybe we'll talk about something because I have a final adventure that needs to be written and I have no writer for it right now. So maybe okay. we can talk. Yeah. Or maybe not. Maybe we'll just be like, fuck you and move on with our lives. Who knows? You're a consultant anyway. <laughs> Len, you're already on awesome. the book. How many credits do you need in the damn book? Do you want to be Shane? Shane's got like three credits in the book. Or <laughs> Shane's got a writing credit, an editing credit, a proofreading credit, and a playtesting credit. Jesus. Like, how, how many credits does one fucking man need? Oh, sorry, and he's five because he also has the art director credit because he's the art director. Meanwhile, Dale has two. One for proofreading, no, one for uh, additional material by, and one for a giant pain in the ass who never delivers anything on time. Nice. Great credit. Yes, and, uh, but you got to admit, I'm at your price point. You are. You are definitely at my price point. Free. <laughs> and Bunny is getting these skin tight cosplay credit. Yeah, I saw that. You notice I was carefully avoiding discussing um, that. No. I'm going to drag you into that. You know this. Of it's course just... you are. Well, it's because we're playing superheroes on uh, Tuesday. We're playing hero Heroic, and they rolled up some characters. The Bunny didn't roll up one, so we have to do that with Bunny at some point. Right. And now she's going to get a skin-tight costume, I guess. So that'll be lovely. Yeah. I buy costumes to go to cons and piece clothes together. Once I showed up, it went from 22 to 27 people. What? <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to timeout? Am I going in timeout? No, you're going in the penalty box. You guys have never seen. Okay, you guys have never seen Slapshot. Clearly, no. Okay, there, Slapshot there, is one of the greatest hockey movies ever made. Uh, and there's a scene. It opens up the movie actually, um, where they have the the French Canadian goalie being uh, Denis Lemieux, and they're asking him uh, what you know what, what the penalty thing is. And his his line is, uh, where is it? Fuck. Give me a second. I got to find it because it's just so funny. It's beyond funny. You know, you do that. You go to the box, you know, two minutes by yourself, you know, and you feel shame, you know, and then you get free. <laughs> That's his description of a penalty. And it's fucking genius for two minor minutes. <laughs> Someone's gonna. Mike's gonna buy us. Mike does cosplay. Mike Percival. He uh, he he's got some good stuff up on his Facebook. Actually, he has a great Boba Fett uh, Mandalorian costume. Oh, really, if I ever did cool. cosplay, that was one. That's the one I'd want to do. You want to do that one, really? Boba Fett, hundred percent. Well, given my big ass gut, I want to do one too. But I'm gonna do him Dixie style, and he's gonna be Boba Foot. <laughs> there you go. Yep. <laughs> gonna he's gonna you know, beer gut, beer cans on a belt, you know, pork rind. His his yeah, truck is a pickup truck with a gun rack, you know, and a Dixie flag on it. You know, I know that guy. <laughs> yeah, we live in the South. I mean that that that's yeah. 
50 K stretch goal. Bunny wears something that will get her banned. <laughs> I already have a 50 K stretch goal lady. Canadian or U.S. I'm not playing this game tonight. I'm just not. I'm staying out of it. Oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, that's weird. Oh, there. Somebody sent me the link already. Okay. Good, 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 good. So, uh, anybody playing any games? In fact, yes. What are you playing? Uh, playing Frolic and Paragons. And when I say playing, I mean playing. My friend is actually running it. Cool. Um, and where do we we alternate between Prowlers and Paragons and D and D Five E, which the friend who's running Prowlers and Paragons is the one who asked me to run Five E, so I will forgive him. Uh, the campaign <laughs> itself is going well, um, so but it's still I don't I don't have any hatred for Five E. It's just there's more to it than I care to be aware of. But I will say I'm running Five E. Um, there's drama story adventures. And there's also dungeon crawls. Mm. And they're really enjoying the dungeon crawls because they really care about their characters. But they know that I'm running from the outset. I'm like, this is a mean game. Yeah. Meaning like, don't die. <laughs> so, um, um, <clears throat> and the more they care about the characters, the more the dungeon crawls are like terrifying to them. Uh, plus yeah. I'm doing this kind of on the fly conversion from some old school stuff to uh, to 5e. And we've discovered some exciting things like ropers are terrifying in 5e. Because they Those have a terrifying period. Attacks. But in 5e, they have four or five attacks that can, if they hit you, you're like restrained. Mm -hmm. And when you're restrained, all subsequent attacks on you have advantage and all of your attacks have disadvantage. Yes. And they have four of those that they can do. Yes. So two ropers against three players is well, we needed to make an adjustment on the fly because that, that just wasn't going to work. <laughs> so, and that's one that's not thought about ahead of time. It's just while I was in the game, I'm like, oh my, that, so, that is an unintended consequence. I ran a 5e dungeon where there was a, they were in the dungeon doing their thing and they went through an area where they triggered, uh, what are the ones that fall? Piercers. Piercers. They, they triggered a couple of piercers and, it, and oh, the piercers are bad news. And they went around the corner and ran into the roper in the next room. And the roper was kicking the shit out of them killed two of them the remaining two ran out forgot all about the piercers and ran right underneath the full pack of piercers and got killed and it was just like thank you good night uh, you know yeah yeah <laughs> 5e has i mean the death saves maybe soften everything up but 5e definitely has some built some more built-in challenges than i think people are fully well, you gotta run into. it Sorry. Like the, pro the problem with 5e is 5e has a deceptively simple appearance as a system. So people just run surface level 5e and they don't understand what they're doing. But when you start actually digging into the guts of how the monsters work and how certain mechanics work and paying attention to legendary and layer actions and things like that, mm -hmm. holy fuck, you can tank a group of players pretty oh, for hard. sure. You know? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> they're, they're, I, they're, I don't get it. It gets a lot of hate, but it shouldn't. It does have a lot of tools for you if you care to dig into them yes. and use them. I mean, said that there's just more there, more stuff there than I care to really interface with. But my friend wanted to play Five E, and I think if I was ever going to run Five E again, I would ban subclasses. Just play your straight class. Yeah. No subclasses. Because I, I, I think would, subclasses I is where it breaks. I think that's the break point is the subclasses. Hmm. But I'm old school. I, I would agree with that. I, I would agree with that. It's yeah. Get rid we've of been that. having we've been having fun. Up, uh, y'all. Excuse me for just a second. I'll be back in a moment. Ah, uh, the missus calls and he must run. Well, there we go. So, what are you not playing anything these days, Squirrel? No, I, I'm bouncing back and forth with work. Uh, <laughs> I haven't ran really anything uh, lately. Um, and actually, the handful of games I did play was at um, uh, GaryCon. Oh, how was Gary Con? It awesome as usual. Awesome. As usual. Yep. Explain as usual. I, I want to go you. next year, so explain this to go. me. Go. But explain what? What do you want to know? What do you tell think? me all about Gary Con? Because I know nothing about Gary Con except all the old guys go there. Correct. And we play all the games. It's not just about Dungeons and Dragons. There's there's Cthulhu. There's uh, some homebrew games. There's 
obviously Dungeons and Dragons, Dungeons and Classics, OSE, Hackmaster, uh, Western games like Aces and Eights. There, I mean, you name it. There's games galore. It's it's a great time. The venue is great. The crowd, from what I understand, still Luke uh, Gygax. He's keeping it capped at 4,000 people max. He's keeping it fairly small. Okay. And this past, uh, uh, this last one, this recent one, it was the 50th anniversary of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. And, it, and it still didn't sell out. Really? Yes. So, I mean, in a way, that's, I mean, it got close. I think I think it was up to like 3,700 out of 4,000. Okay. So it got really, really close. But it's, I mean, the venue's great. There's a lot of space. It's, it's a good time, man. It really is. I've met a lot of good people, a lot of good uh, uh, con friends over the years, and we look forward to seeing each other. Um, yeah, you should go. I'm telling you, you, you I'm should go. About it. I'm thinking about it. It's just, it's very expensive because I got to, so I would have to go down to the States. So cross over to Burlington or something like that to catch a flight to, um, Minnesota, to Minnesota, yeah. Wisconsin. Well, Wisconsin Chicago, Minnesota. well, you get, you can go into Chicago. And then uh, from Chicago, I got to get up to, which is only two hours. Lake Geneva. Yeah. It's only two hours from Chicago. Okay. And then once I'm there, I got to have a hotel. Yeah. How many days is this thing? Uh, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Ugh. So once I do that, and then I got to eat while I'm there. So travel and lodging alone is going to be a couple thousand dollars minimum. minimum. Okay. Hello, Hi. child. I have a cat. Hey, little buddy. I'll trade you. I'll take your kid. You can have the cat. What do you say? This is Chris. And no, you cannot have him. All right. Hi, Chris. Hi, Hi Chris. Good to see you, buddy. You <laughs> yeah, it's now. I don't have to go over to you know cross any international borders. I don't have anything. I mean, for for myself, I drive. It's nine hours drive one way. I get a hotel from Wednesday night through Sunday night. Yeah, um, that's a thousand bucks. Yeah. Um. Now that's for my son and myself, but the money I spend at the con for food, even eating there, and without buying anything for the four days, you only need like two hundred bucks. Bullshit! I can't eat half the shit you eat. Diabetic. I can't. Okay, I, well, then I can't you need go. Four hundred bucks. Well, you'd think, but no. I, I'm aware of how expensive it is for me when I have to go eat places. It's really expensive. So that's fine. Like I said, just food and lodging, I'm figuring it'd be about a 2000 Canadian for me right there, which is about 1500 American. Okay. Well, so, okay. I mean, all right. Now, for me, it's 1200 right. So we're 300 Yeah, but that got to take the flight, right? So, so wait. So yeah, hang that's, on. that's the thing is the flight. Hang on. Let, let's figure this out. So... It's uh, let's let's just for fun. I'm gonna look at Air Canada's prices because I know Air Canada flies down that way. Let's see, just to see when is when is the uh, when is the the event? Uh, March 24th through the 27th, 8th, whatever. Okay, why did it... it's it's around that every year? It could be the 23rd through the 20, you know, but so it's in end March. Of March. Yeah, right end of at the, March. the peak of March break flight height uh, height increases or the hikes on flights. But let's go for anyway. So I'm gonna leave Montreal and I'm gonna go to Chicago, right? And then I don't know how the fuck I'm gonna get from Chicago to Minnesota, but I'll figure it out. Well, if you're coming down that way and I can pick you up, we'll give you a ride. Well, I appreciate that. That's you can bunk with us. We don't care. I, I don't bunk with no, 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 no. I'm a grown we'll, ass we'll man. Be, yeah, me I'm too. A, I'm a grown you needed, ass if, man. If you needed to. So it starts on Wednesday. Yeah, uh, it starts on Thursday. So I want to come in on a Wednesday, and then it yes. finishes on Saturday. So I'd want to fly back on the Monday morning, right? Correct. Okay. So I'm going to select those as my dates. Booking this in advance, almost a year in advance, it would cost me searching for, searching for, searching for, searching for. Shall we, shall we do this together? Uh, economy class, 
three hundred and fifty three Canadian there. And then on the return, let's see where the return is. Oh, I got to pick one of these first. Okay. So let's say I'm going to pick economy class and be really uncomfortable. Uh, no refund for a fee for a fee. Uh, standard seed fee. Da, da, da. I'll just grab the basic minimum and just say, fuck it. It's going to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to keep basic. Yep. Yeah. And then let's go ahead and see what my return flight would be. Coming back at 7.20 a.m. from Chicago would be impossible because that means I'd have to leave Minnesota at 5 a.m. to get there on time. And that, even then, I'd leave at 4 a.m. So let's say I grab the 11 a.m. flight out of Chicago. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know what? Maybe, yeah, that's fine. For now, we'll just say that. $408. All right. Let's go. Um, can't, so i got to upgrade the standard. That actually now costs me another 25 bucks. So my final flight is 787 788 dollars canadian just for my flight mm -hmm. and i'm not in lake geneva i'm in chicago yeah that's right? that's the thing okay now hotels is there like a best western in lake geneva yeah there's there's all kinds um this year the hotel i had to get uh because a i was an idiot and got it almost last minute uh -huh. forgetting that it was the 50th anniversary Okay. It was a bit more expensive because capitalism, baby, you know. Yeah, okay. But every year before this was, the, they were very reasonable. And okay. a lot of the hotels that are, are close, uh, they do a shuttle. So mm -hmm. once you get to the hotel, every <clears throat> hour, two hours, there's a shuttle going to the con back to the hotel. So if you can get to your hotel and there's a shuttle provided for free, you're good. You don't have okay. to drive. You just need to get to the hotel. Holiday in club vacations, $170 Canadian a night. Belmont, Baymont by Wyndham. I don't know what the hell that is. That's $88 a night. That scares me. It's a three-star hotel. No, Lake Geneva Lodge. That, the, Baymont, the Baymont isn't that bad, and it has a shuttle. Okay. The Lake Geneva Lodge is 166 Hampton is 164 Ooh, Hampton Inns are good, actually. What yeah, con I, is this for? Gary Con. Gary Con. God, I want to go. So you, come. You should go. I'm telling. It's worth it. You, you should go. Just. I've heard. I've heard. Baymont really by Wyndham Delvin near Jake near Lake Geneva is eighty eight dollars a night. That's a fucking steal. That's well, and then add add about thirty bucks for taxes and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so the new prices on that. So for the a comfort, basic deluxe a comfort, room, inn, yeah. comfort, comfort Inn and Suites, if you find that one, that's within two miles. I know they have a shuttle. Yeah. How much are they? They don't seem to have them listed here. Comfort Suites. Or comfort uh, comfort suites. suites. 131 a night. Yeah. Oh, they, okay. they have a shuttle. Now, is that yeah. that's forecast for, for next year? Yeah, that's forecast for next year. Okay. And it just went up. Yeah, so 124 Canadian per night. So that's five nights. So that's another. I was right. It's about fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars. It's going to cost me for just living, right? Just yeah. for existing, traveling, and existing. That doesn't include buying anything once I get there. Exactly. But well, but the badge, the silver badge, it, they're one hundred and ten, one hundred and twenty-five, something like that. Yeah. But you don't have to pay for any games. That includes the games that you get to pick. I wouldn't be playing. I would just be seeing the sites and meeting and talking to people. I'm not, I don't like role playing with strangers. <clears throat> not my thing. And that's okay. I'm okay going to a gaming con and not yeah. gaming. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I want to see the vendors. There's, there's I want to see shows. I want to see panels. You know, I want to see the stuff that's. You know, <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, uh, pickup games that happen too. So if you did, you know, meet a couple people and they're like, you know, we're going to get together in the lounge at, you know, 10 o'clock if you're free and we'll play. There, there's a lot of that going on as well. Yeah. No, we'll see. Maybe. A lot of money I'll have to save up, but it could happen. It, it could happen. It could happen. It's well worth it. I would think so. I would go for sure if Len was going to be there. I would I would make the effort just so I could see. And him. Tim Cask is there. I see him every year. Well, that's fine, but Len's my friend. Tim's just somebody I met yeah, on the internet. Len's your buddy. I meet Len. I'll be in the same room with Len so I can put him in the fucking headlock he deserves. <laughs> no gate, no gate. <laughs> now the super eight 
is a hundred dollars a night. But super eights are kind of garbage in Canada. What are they like in the states? Yeah, yeah. it depends. I'm, right now, I'm at a super eight, and this super eight isn't bad. And you say but the Baymont's good? The Baymont, the Baymont's not bad. The the oh, there's there's something good and not bad. What which, which is it? The, is it good the comfort, or is it? The comfort is is good. Um, the 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 what was that? The one I just said, the Wyndham. Uh, well, the Comfort Inn does have free breakfast. Yes. Oh, and the breakfast is decent. And a pool. Yes. Is there any chance of getting a room at the Grand Geneva? Ah, uh, good luck. Okay. The Geneva it, Inn. The, the Geneva the Inn is different. It's on site, but it's not the actual Grand Geneva. The Grand Geneva starts at four hundred and forty-eight dollars a night. Yeah. Good, good yeah. luck. Yeah. And they're usually booked. Because it's the off season, and they only have so many rooms available off season. Because the other rooms, well, they have been the past two years. I don't think this year they might have been, and I might not have seen it. They're renovating. Now, how far is this comfort in? You said from there, like two miles. Shit, I can walk that. I don't know. Well, you're from Canada, so yeah, yeah, walk, two miles in March. In oh no! Oh, it's Not funny. The first time I met a, a buddy of mine in person, he was from <clears> uh, <throat> Texas and then moved to Alabama. The first time I met him was up, up, you know, and it was snowing and cold, and he's shivering. He looked like a Chihuahua shitting razor blade. My son and I were making fun of him. We're like, "Oh, look at that cute Southern. Look, he's chilly. He's cold, isn't he?" You know, we're we're Ohio. We're northern Ohio. It snow, thirty degrees. Yeah, y'all just have less nerves. That's ten, that, ten below. We didn't, you know, it didn't bother us a bit. But he's all bundled up and got all he's all cold and having a cigarette. And we're just if being highly cold tolerant is the number one sort of uh, determinant of masculinity, put me in a dress and call me Sheila because I can't stand the cold. <laughs> <laughs> well, just some people they're not. I you come know. from the land of the ice and snow, where the midnight sun and the hot springs flow, sir. <laughs> yeah. Oh look. It's a Shane. Hey. Hello. Uh, it's What's an up? excited Shane. What's up, buddy? Things are great. I sent you something on Facebook to uh, edit. Okay. I just saw that. Get it then I saw StreamYard. Fast okay. as humanly possible, please. Okay. Uh, Cody, I'm thinking about it. The problem is I have to make a decision. Do I go to Claricon or do I go to GaryCon? And I don't know. I got to make that decision because I can't do two cons. I got to do one. I have to save up all my, my, my filthy lucre for one con. And to be honest, and I'm not saying this to be disrespectful to anybody, I'd much rather go to GaryCon because it's a further trip away. It's outside my country. It's something interesting. It's like it's a it's an escape. You know what I mean? For four or five and days. You could, out of the country. you could even do one every other year if you get into a, a rhythm. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But Cody, I'd say we're probably about seventy five percent chance that we're going to be. I'll be going to GaryCon next year. Seventy five percent. Come on, let's do it. Hey, Barry, get a chance to check out the Dagger Heart play test. If not totally interested, I understand. Zachary, you have hit the nail directly on the head. I could, I have no interest in Dagger Heart. <laughs> Zero. Sorry. Unless, I mean, if everybody starts raving about how great it is and how Dagger amazing Heart. it is, maybe I'll check it out, you know? But right now, I've, I'm that not... one. I've, heard, I've, I've heard, heard that, that one. I've heard that it's good, but that if you like it, you might like Blades in the Dark more. Oh, I don't and, like Blades in the Dark, so... Well, if you don't like Blades in the Dark, you, you, you might not like that. Yeah, yeah, we're, no, we've, we've, this. we've solved... I thought, no, I thought, uh, not Daggerheart, I thought the other <laughs> game that they did, which was Kanda, Candela Obscura, was Blades in the Dark. Oh, you know what? You, I'm sure you're correct. Yeah, it's Candela Obscura. Yeah. Tell you what, Zach, I'll check it out. When I get a chance, and I'll maybe do a review of it here on the channel or something like that. Because, you know, I used to give people that were on the show things to review. I didn't mind. One. No. Dale, Dale, where's my, uh, Dale where's my Cyberpunk review? Hey, Dale, you, where's, you my, where's, my, where's my Marvel Multiverse review? Oh. And just to throw shade somewhere else. Hey, Brian, if you're watching this on the replay because you're not here right now, where's my Star Trek Lower Decks supplement review? You know what I'm saying? So, oh, Zach, I'll, you're going to pick it up. 
I can do the multi uh, Marvel multiverse be review nice. right now. Be nice. He's a friend. Be nice. Matt is a friend. We don't just talk shit for no reason. If you want oh, to do a I... review where you go into the depths of what it is you don't like about it and all that, that's different. You understand, Texas? <laughs> be nice until it's time not to be nice. Exactly. Welcome to uh, Four Color Cafe Roadhouse. <laughs> and I'll tell you when it's time not to be nice. Um, oh, have you seen the one? Haven't watched it yet. I hear it's. Some people say it's fun, and some people say it's stupid as fuck. Those two things are not mutually exclusive. That's how I feel most of the time. You know, but then I like Death Stalker movies. <clears throat> I recently rewatched a movie called Space Hunters: Adventures in the Forbidden Zone. Space Hunter: Adventures oh, yeah. in the Forbidden Zone, and it's starring one of my Peter favorite Straub. Movies. Peter Strau, you got Andrea, Andriana, Andriana Machalina, or whatever her name is, as Chalmers, his yes. sidekick. You got when Molly she died, Ringwald. We went downhill. Um, Molly Ringwald, uh, Michael Ironsides, um, what's his name? Uh, fucking Ghostbusters. Uh, right, exactly, exactly. Who hasn't aged today? Yeah, seriously. It's from the Angela Bassett school of, I've decided to stop aging it. Uh, no, Ernie it's Hudson? From, Ernie Hudson, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Ernie it's Hudson school is of, As many of my Caribbean friends have told me, it's the school of black don't crack. <laughs> That's what that well, is. He, he, uh, he, yeah, he yeah. looks like he's in his 50s still. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the movie, had, I'd forgotten. I actually saw it in the theater. And yeah. um, wow, it's terrible. No, it's but not. It's, it's not terrible. You're wrong, and I'll tell you why you're wrong. It's an amazing adventure. <laughs> Think about it now as an adventure you're running. And all of those encounters. No, it's terrible. It's, no, no. It's, it's atrocious. It's actually, if it's an adventure, it's an atrocious event. No, it's I'm atrocious. Not. You're wrong. But, You're wow, right. was it fun to watch? Exactly the point. It's wow, fun, to was watch. It fun to watch. <laughs> Come on, man. Amazon Water Women, you got to fight them. But then the Steel Dragon shows up. You got to fight that. That's fucked up. Those weird, oh, so, fat, chubby people. That okay, so you clearly, things. you clearly remember this movie. So I've seen this movie maybe, twenty times. Me and you I have love a good conversation movie. here, but I have to share this joke with you if you remember the movie this well. Go for it. Michael Ironside plays this ridiculous cyborg guy Overdog. who's on like a mechanical crane. He can't actually mm -hmm. walk anywhere. He has just craned around all over the place. But the interesting thing is he's got these cyber claws. Yeah. He's got these giant cyber hands. And when I say giant cyber hands, each of those hands is approximately the size of a half-folded metal folding chair. They're mm -hmm. ridiculously enormous. Yes. They're Transformer toy enormous. Yes. They're just absurd. And he's got these two giant hands. Okay. So I don't know why you're movie, selling this like it's a bad thing. This is all at the end of the movie, awesome. At the end of the movie, <laughs> Molly Ringwald, like very young and still learning to act, Molly Ringwald, is like um, a prisoner somewhere. So her hands, she's like cuffed up, right? As she's yeah. in this like life draining device. But as you're watching the movie, you know, she's holding her hands up and she's cuffed. But you, you can see that the cuffs are significantly larger than her 13-year-old Molly Ringwald wrists. Yes. So like literally you 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 they didn't do anything to like I don't know put some cloth in there or something. No, no. So Why? you can literally see that she could just kind of take take her her hands out. Now she doesn't, but you can clearly see that and as I'm watching the movie, I turn to my friend and I go, that's this villain's like like his his Achilles heel, his major flaw because he has these ridiculous giant hands, he assumes everyone else does too. And so he puts everybody in cuffs that don't fit because he just, you know, thinks that way anyway. Okay. So atrocious movie, I highly recommend it. It's an amazing <laughs> film, it's fun. If you can turn off your critical analysis brain and just enjoy something, it's a really good romp. Um, <laughs> it's got Harold Ramis doing the voice of the control uh, guy yep. that calls him up and tells him that he owes mega bucks. I love the fact that they use mega bucks as the two the, the currency. It's fantastic. <laughs> mega and Ernie bucks. Hudson is awesome in it, and Peter Strauss is fun, and Michael Ironsides is fantastic in it because Michael Ironsides always plays the best villains. Period. Um, <laughs> I love the chemist, the evil guy, the chemist. But he's like, do they have? Do they have any scarves? I hate when they have scars. I am so are, impressed that you remember. Are they this missing movie? any limbs? <laughs> He's such a great how, villain. How do you remember this? That movie? might be the only part of that movie I remember. <laughs> Quick question for you, Len. How many years was I an actor for? Fair enough, but I mean, dialogue sticks. There's better films. <laughs> no, saying. and I can quote better films too. But I'm just saying, <laughs> I love that film. Yes. Absolutely adore that film. It's a great film, and I'm telling you, you could make an. Awesome Star Frontiers, D and D, Gamma World, even Traveler Adventure out of that thing. It's amazingly fun. 
So, okay, one of my top ten favorite films. She, 1984, Sandelberg. Awful film. You think if you didn't like, if you thought from, you thought Hunt, Space Hunter was bad, this film will make your fucking eyes bulge. It's so bad, <laughs> but it's a great adventure. It's a really cool adventure. Ivan Reitman produced the movie, and Ivan Reitman was quoted as saying, "It's a terrible 3D movie." Absolutely, it's a terrible 3D movie. That's the point: <laughs> is that it's a terrible 3D movie. All right. Saturday night on my Discord, we're watching Space Hunter. Oh my God, I apologize Wait. to the entirety of the internet for this. Mm. <laughs> Sweet. What? What? Sorry. Sweet. You in Squirrel? Yeah. You gonna come watch it with us? Yeah, if I can, I'll make it. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. <laughs> I, I've seen it. I, I have seen it, and he's bringing back some memories. It, it is. It is a fun. It's it's corny, cheesy. It's eh, but it's fun. It is a yeah. Problem. To this day, when I have to hit something to make it work or kick it, I refer to it as emergency repair procedure number one. Absolutely. <laughs> we we had an old Zenith television. You had to smack it every now and again. The old tube TV. Fair. I am. Whack. Give it a good staggered. whack, and it'd come right in. The picture would come right in. Perfect. How are you staggered, sir? Have you I, met? This I is am a steel staggered at your there. recall of this movie in particular. Is all. Dude, I have. Oh, it's not this movie. It's anything about no, Dr. Detroit it's horrible. and DC Cab. What do you think I did in the eighties? No, all right, fair. I watched <laughs> True. movies. What, yeah. Like Let me I lived in a, a point. small town until I was fifteen. I lived in a small town of two thousand people. Okay, and that was a French town. I'd have to go three miles up the road to the town where I went to school in the English to have fun with the English man. And I do that. Drive my bike up, whatever. <laughs> But on the weekends and stuff, during the winter when you didn't do all that kind of crazy stuff, and even in the summer after we'd be hanging out, we'd go back to my parents' trailer. We had a VCR and a TV. We'd watch movies. We'd go to the video store and get movies. When my father brought videos into his store, I'd just go get them for free. And then eventually just became the guy that was running the video department at the store, and I'd be the clerk renting it all out. And then I got jobs in video stores. I'm like Quentin Tarantino, man. I have seen a metric bit ton of movies. I'm very impressed. That's all. I, it's say what you will. I am very impressed with your recall of this film. You should change that logo in the corner to the mimic. You haven't given me permission to make the mimic logo shirt yet, Bunny. So until I get permission to do that, I'm not touching that thing. Shane, did you see the mimic logo? Not for the Z. No. Okay, you got to see this, baby. This is gonna blow your mind. Oh, I'm sorry, Z. No, no, I say Z. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome, Bunny. That's, that's very cool. That's insanely awesome. I don't know about Star Hunter Grizzly Beardo, but Space Hunter is pretty good. Ooh, that's right. I threw Nerd Shade. I threw Nerd Shade. No, dude, I have watched so many bad movies and just love them because of what they were. They were an escape from living in a fishing right. town. You know? <laughs> so I like that shit. That shit makes it fun. And it's it's all seeped into every game I run. Like, uh, there's there's a game I'm running right now. They don't even realize they're playing out the plot of She yet. <laughs> but they, maybe they will at some point. We'll find out. But yeah, man. Yeah, man. Albert Pyun is an amazing director who makes bad films and good films, depending on what he was doing. Well, he's dead now, sadly. Rest in peace. But he did some fantastic <coughs> stuff. Some fantastic stuff. Okay, I'm going to get Bunny off my ass, and I'm going to Photoshop this into a transparent corner logo. So you guys go ahead and tell me if there's anything else you want to talk about or bring up topics, or let's go. And then they go quiet. That's they the yes. Crickets. What about your review? No, no. <laughs> so Shane, you're doing some writing. I think everybody here except me is doing some writing for Heroic, correct? What are you working yeah. on? Squirrel's right not. now, I'm... What? Oh, Squirrel's not. I thought he said something completely different. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah you're working on Squirrel nuts. That's what he's working on. Yeah. We yeah. threw over the uh, wall a more expanded um, section for the powers in Heroic. Because um, a lot of people seem to think that we're kind of trying to narrow things, whereas we're just saying, you know, the sky is the limit. If, if you can name it, put a power on it, and explain how it does what it does, it's a power. We don't care. Um, is, well, as you saw, some of you saw when you were trying to create um, random characters, somebody was trying to do time powers, and um, 
stop time and speed up time and and I forget what that character ended up being bear but it was like he wanted to um, create good uh, oh, good luck Ty's for everyone character. oh my god Ty's character. <laughs> so Ty's character hurt my brain there are some powers that you kind of you, your narrator has to go no 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 yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, there's a, there's a power like that in P and P, which is the Omni power, and it's a, sort of the same approach. And DC had something like that as well. Uh, and yeah, yeah, there's, there's, it's tricky to when you do that whole open thing. It's tricky because even with guidelines, I think inherently when you're writing it, you've got some subconscious and rules and end zones that you're kind of taking for granted until that player comes along is like. I control molecular motion. I'm like, oh shit! You know, <laughs> well, I, many moons ago, I was playing champions, and I was, wanted to play a a magician, a, a real sorcerer type, wizard, whatever, whatever verb you want. There you go. Whatever you want to say there, that looks cool. And I said, well, just give me an elemental control or whatever power framework it was. You know, twenty points or something like that. Real small variable power pool. That's what it was. And the gym let me do it for like two sessions. And he goes, you need to make another character because it, <laughs> it was just too useful for me. And he's like, oh, what are you going to do? I'll just pull a cell phone on my, out of my pocket or I pull a pistol out of my pocket. And he's like, you, you can do all of that. I'm like, how, how many points are is a pistol, dude? I mean, I could pull a submachine gun out if I wanted to. That doesn't actually seem that powerful within the context of a supers game. To, it to wasn't break. like Superman yeah. flying around, but that that type of thing was also like what Bear likes to do. He likes to have the superheroes along with the super skilled people, and have a you know a, a playing field where everybody can do something useful. I, I like to do what a lot of then? utility. Yeah, you like you like to have a game where. Um, Thor and Hawkeye can be on the same team. I, I tried as well. I don't know if I succeeded, but yeah, that's that's one of I think the litmus tests when you're if you're designing one, you're always thinking about like Colossus and Dazzler or like you know a, a, a Wasp and Thor. Can you? Yeah. Does it work? It's always that's a, that's tricky and maybe even not for the designer to answer. But that's always one of your you know litmus. Tests. Hey, hey, I can answer like, that. You know why I can answer that? Because it absolutely can do in heroic. Mm -hmm. Let's take heroic. All right, let's take Thor. We've got Thor. He's up at that uncanny level with his his hammer running around swinging and hitting people. Great. Then let's take Hawkeye. He's got an excellent agility. He's got a bow skill gives him a plus one rank. He's got weapon specialist or weapons master of his bow gives him another plus two. Maybe he's got the quirk accurate gives him another plus one. So now he's up to plus four calm shifts. So his excellence just became remarkable, incredible, amazing, mighty. So he's shooting that bow one rank less than Thor's running around flipping that hammer. Oh. <laughs> that was that was weird. What? What? What was weird? Okay, at least on my side, you you uh, you stuck. That's probably me. Sorry. Did no. I stick yeah, I think yeah, that so was just you. Just you. So by using Lovely. the proper talents and quirks, you can make a street level character that can rumble with the Avengers. It's not hard to Whoa. do. What I found playing, obviously not heroic, but in the old Marvel system, the challenge we had was less on accuracy than it was, in fact, on damage and damage resistance. Well, that's what fucking. Like, I don't know if heroic. Was, uh, sorry, just I, I don't know how heroic answers it, but I remember when I was running the game, our challenge was like I couldn't have a villain with a armor higher than a particular. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I got yeah, you. Okay. You know so there's there's a couple of ways around that. One. You, everything in the heroic is against its versus, right? It's a comparative of intensities. So first of all, you're using the chart that goes from negative nine to positive nine with shift zero in the middle. You always start at shift zero. So you take, let's say, Lens playing a character who has a remarkable agility, a remarkable fighting, and Squirrel's playing a villain who's got a mighty fighting, and he wants to punch Len. Well, incredible, amazing, mighty. So he's rolling on the plus three column shift table. Len says, fuck this. I don't want to get hit by this asshole. I'm going to make my evasion as my reaction rolls his evasion versus the difficulty of what it is and gets a really good awesome result applying a few negative column shifts to squirrel to hit him, thereby making it harder to get hit. So that's where using the defensive reaction is going to be a big benefit to people <laughs> who are squishy and don't want to get punched. 
Second, when you're trying to hurt the big bad, first of all, if the only way you think you can beat bad guys is by doing damage, you're not thinking. Because the X-Men never defeated Juggernaut by doing damage. They never defeated Unus the Untouchable by doing damage. They figured out ways to, to maneuver them into traps and things like that. We have that. We have a lure mechanic. We have a taunting mechanic. We have lots of ways you can throw them off their game and lure them into trap. But let's say you're just going for the straight damage. On a red result, you do plus one column shift damage, plus one rank shift damage, and on a double O, you do plus two. Find ways to improve your powers by using stuff like an, an enhancement armor piercing. So it gives you the same thing as that martial arts that allows you to slam and stun opponents without doing uh, damage to them. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, now I've got a power blast that can do slam and stun without doing damage to the guy uh, for and a kinetic blast. So I'm going to add that to my thing. So that way I can, I can pinball the guy all around, maybe knock him out without doing a point of fucking damage to him, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Awesome. It all comes down to thinking and making a character that works. But if you think the only way you're going to be able to beat people is by just hammering through their armor, you are not playing a game the right way. You're playing on another planet, and you're going to find out the hard way when you get tanked. But if you think around the problem, make the way they do in the comic books, well written one. <laughs> Good, yeah, the well written ones. Yeah. It's there. The problem is, is a lot of people play superhero games like they're video games. Right. They just mash the buttons until, you know, it's it's Mortal Kombat. Mash, 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 dead. Street Fighter 2, but then, 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 then dead. So think a little bit beyond that. Use yep. tactics, use the rules to your advantage. They're there for a reason. There's lots of ways you can increase your output, there's lots of ways you can decrease your enemy's output against you. And those are the ways of going. Hey, Sergeant Dan. How you doing, brother? Oh, you know, life is but a dream. I hope I wake up at some point. Yay. Dream or a nightmare? I, I refuse to answer that question on the grounds that the Clintons will have me killed. A dream to some <laughs> and a nightmare to others. Oh. The hell was that? Just got home. The hell was, that? was that like the worst Obi-Wan I've ever heard in my life? Excalibur, baby. Oh, yeah, that was not a good Merlin. No, you're right, it wasn't. I can't do a... It was a really good Obi-Wan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> By the way... Uh, come on, Squirrel Herman, I'm trying to give him a bone. Don't be a dick about it. Jeez. <laughs> King Eric, the greatest of all, a while back posed a question that we sort of sailed question? past. But he was asking, are Zorro, the Phantom, and Tarzan considered early superheroes? Yes, they're prototype superheroes, absolutely. They're mystery men. Yeah. The they're pulp, they're, pulp era. they're pulp heroes exactly. Yeah. They're the precursor to the superhero. The superhero yep. starts when Superman arrives, right? 1938. Mm -hmm. Superman. There we are. But before that, Doc Savage, you know, Shadow, the Shadow, the Phantom, uh, the, the Green Hornet, Hornet, probably Green Hornet, exactly. Yeah. Green Hornet. All they're mystery men. They're you know. If you have any question about whether or not Tarzan is a hero, please read the first two Tarzan novels. That question will be answered rather quickly. <laughs> so Windry D wants to know, Mr. Baird, do you ever have a Randall moment when running the video section or movies from Clerks? Dude, I used to work in an adult video store. <laughs> <laughs> the stories I could tell you. Let me just leave it at that. Yes, yeah, rest in peace, Albert Pion. I agree. Though I always wanted his... Okay. I'm going to say this, and you can all disagree with me or not, but the sword in Sword and the Sorcerer, the three blades that shoots, it's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever seen. Of course. Yeah. Ridiculous. Like, I, I know so many people are like, I want that in D&D. &D. I'm like, it's dumb. Why do you want that? It's yeah. stupid. Oh, that triple-bladed sword. That Yeah, yeah. yeah that shot to the, the, the sword. Blades, which then means you eventually have to go and get the blade back out of the guy. You know what I mean? Yes. It, it, it reproduces uh... new blades. I agree. Dumb. All right. So we agree. We Yay. all agree. Dumb. Well, this is fun. And I Nobody actually just watched that, re watched that movie the other day. Just, I think I, I think I had to puke or something and <laughs> I, I, I watched it. <laughs> we, watched, we watched the, uh, the riff tracks version on uh, discord a month or so ago. It was fun. We did that. I, we did Death Stalker. We watched actually straight up watched legit Death Stalker, Death Stalker Two with no riff tracks. It was hilarious. It's so much fun. Sorry, Dale, what were you gonna say? Well, I, I started to say I, I suffered through that movie because my mom was an absolute fan of that actor, Lee Horsley. Yeah, Matt Matt Houston. Matt Houston. 
Watch that. All he, the time. Oh, yeah. Tom Selleck Same wannabe. Reason. There was this moment in my child, my youth, where I realized that C.J. Parsons, his uh, Matt Houston's assistant, is Princess Ardala in the Buck Rogers movie, and I was like, "Okay, I'm confused." <laughs> hell of a hell of a good looking woman. You guys know who I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I said, we watched Buck that Rogers? show. You ever seen the, the '80s time. Buck Rogers, Len? Or '70s? Of course, I have. I saw every episode. I saw the movie multiple times. But well, she's Princess it's, Ardala, it's, it's, right? She's Princess what? Ardala. She's the the princess, the the daughter of the. the okay, Dragon all I Dragon. remember is that. Pamela Hensley, she's beautiful. She's insanely gorgeous. Okay, fair enough. Well, in Matt Houston, starring Lee Horsley, who was the guy in Sword and the Sorcerer okay. on that show, she played his assistant, oh. C.J. Persons. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I'm you, Is the Sword and the Sorcerer, I, for the past six, seven months, I've been watching with the same friend who I watched Space Hunters with. We've been watching intentionally terrible movies, working our way through terrible sword and sorcery movies. Yeah. And by terrible, I'm saying this gently because some of them aren't terrible, but and they're all wonderful. Yeah. Actually, when I say terrible, I also mean they're wonderful. Well, people shit on like barbarians, and barbarians is super fun. I don't know why they shit on but it. So much. Again, right? That was that's on our list. We haven't gotten there yet. Uh, but super- um, um, but is this the the three sword pew movie the one where at some point he's like the dude, the barbarian, is that the one with the barbarian dude who's sort of crucified? Or yeah, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the hero, Lee Horsley. He gets crucified at the he's end. He's crucified at one point. He has to break out or something. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, after I, uh, that buddy of mine plays for the other team, and he said, when I was seven years old and that movie was on and I saw him crucified, I realized, hmm, maybe I don't like girls. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's... Okay, that would that would like that movie was very important for him. <laughs> well, that's fair. There's nothing wrong with that. That's fair. That fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. I, you know. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, you know, nothing wrong with that. I mean, if that's the way it is, I, I, I can't remember what oh yeah, it was um Bangles. Uh walk like an Egyptian. That little side eye eye moment she does. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, that's when I fully realized I Played for this team, you know, <laughs> you know she look doesn't look that different now. She's right she there. She does, dude. I've oh, seen right, pictures. Relatively speaking, considering it's been forty years, it depends on the makeup. Looks old now. I'm sorry. Wow, women do not age as gracefully as men. Yeah, yeah, this uh, is graceful. Yeah. Angela Bassett would like a word with you. I, I was going to say, there, yeah. there's In some general, women that come on. There, there's we well, all heard of the, one of, the things, one of the things you have to remember, guys, because you like an average normal woman will age much better than an actress or a musician in the sure. video age. And the reason why is because you don't know what fucking makeup is. Women going out to the club do not know what makeup is until they've had to be on camera with all those lights and everything, and they fucking take this shit on you, and it's really bad for your skin. Okay. Yes. Now think about this. You're you're an actress or an actor, and you're getting this shit caked on every day. And the women get more than the men every day. Ten hours, twelve hours. Chemicals, chemicals, you know, chemicals. Five, six weeks in a row on a shoot, and then you got a couple of days off, and then you're back on another shoot, or maybe a week off, and you're on another shoot, or a month off, and you're on another shoot, and again, or you're on a series where two thirds of your year are working, and you're, every day you're going in 12, 15 hour days and getting covered in makeup or mm-hmm. makeup. That shit destroys their skin. That makes sense. Okay. And that's why when they get into their 40s and 50s and you see these pictures, they love to put up on those celebrity rags, you know, here's a shot of Britney Spears, how she really looks. Well, yeah, because her skin's been destroyed by this fucking makeup they put on her, you know, it just, just ruins you. So, you know, that said, I worked with George Hamilton. He is that tanned. <laughs> <laughs> Super nice guy. Super amazing guy. But nice. Jesus Christ, he looks like leather. You know what I mean? Like, is oh, but there you go. Yeah, Genuine Corinthian the, leather. Sorry, what? Genuine Fine Corinthian leather. leather. <laughs> uh, we we, um, we uh, shot a movie with him, a, a miniseries for Annie called um, uh, Barnum, P.T. Barnum, starring Bo Bridges. And we were all we were all playing the the rich New York financier banker guys who were always just, well, every scene we're in we have to be smoking cigars. None of us had smoked cigars before. 
but George fucking Hamilton knew how to smoke cigars. So George taught us like in the first day, all the techniques of how to smoke and how to cut it properly. And you never take the ash off because you want to be able to stand your cigar on the ash and that shows it's going to burn evenly and the flavor of all these. And we're just like, we're like all young actors in our you know, 20s and 30s going, like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, what next, George? <laughs> just like, yes. But he was super insecure about his acting. George Hamilton does not feel he is a good actor. So on more than one occasion, he would drag one of us aside and go, would you mind coming over and just running the lines with me so I can feel comfortable once the camera comes on? We're like, absolutely, man. You're, you're a fucking mensch. You're a dude. We love working yeah. with you. You know what I mean? We're going to help you. And then he would spend all between takes, because we're sitting around at a fucking table smoking cigars with nothing to do while they're setting up the next shot. He would tell us old Hollywood stories. Oh, nice. nice. And some of them were so <laughs> fucking cool. But he told us this one. He was shooting a movie in Mexico. And Gabe Lay. he gets up to go to set one morning and he gets down and the driver's like, Senor, we're not going anywhere. What do you mean we're not going anywhere? I gotta get to set. And he's like, mm, we're not going anywhere. And he points at the door and there's cop cars in front of the hotel. He doesn't know what's going on. So he goes out and he talks to the, the cop and the fucking head cop is there. Like the fucking generalissimo for the city that they're in. And he's like, your movie did not pay. The roads are close to you. So they call the producers in LA and they're like, look, this is what's going on. He's not, and they're like, put him on the phone and they work out some sort of deal with the produ- the, the, the generally some between the producers. Because next thing we know, every day we're getting police escorts to set. The sirens are blaring as we're going through traffic. So everything parts like the Red Sea. Right. <laughs> Towards the end of the shoot, the generally so invites me to his villa to come, you know, smoke cigars and drink, you know, scotch and hang out with him because I'm an American actor and he's an important man. He goes, so I go. He shows me his gun collection, and there's some really beautiful guns. And he goes, I really like this one that had a pearl handle. It was a really nice old style, very engraved. I really like it. He goes, you take it. I'm like, no, 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 I can't take it. I can't take it. But we also talked about horses. Okay. Back to L.A., he says. He says, a couple of months later, he gets a call from customs. Sir, your container's arrived. My what? Your container's arrived. Come down and collect it. So he drives down, and there's a container with a horse in it. <laughs> And he's like, okay. And he goes, and he gets the thing, and it's a gift from the general saying, This is a gift. I enjoyed our time together. Please, if you ever come back to Mexico, come see me. So they take the horse. He goes and finds a stable, takes the horse to the stables to be stabled. He's like, Okay, I guess I own a horse now. He gets a call the next day from the sales going, Sir, we were uh, mucking out the container and uh, we found something you might want to come down here and get. He's like, What? We think it'd be best if you came down. He's like, Okay. He drives down with the driver, goes in. The fucking gun was hidden in the hay of the horse. So when they mucked out, they found this fucking box with a gun in it. And he's like, we believe this is yours. He's like, yes, thank you. (laughs) So this is the kind of shit he's telling us between takes. And we're just having a fucking blast. It was like probably in all the shoots I did, uh, that was probably one of the top five just for how much fun we had on set. And it was because of George, 100% because of George. That'd be a hoot. And the director was Simon Windsor, Harley Davidson and the Barbaro Man, The Phantom, uh what else have he done did a bunch of movies in uh australia that's where he was he made his name and he was an awesome director he was fun to work with too he basically he came to me because we did the uh i did the casting i was the reader in the casting and he and i got along really well in the casting he's like i'm gonna put you in my movie and i'm like what he goes yeah i, I figured something out for you then he comes back and he goes hey read this line to me and i'm like uh blah 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 he goes great you're perfect you got the role <laughs> <laughs> so he then said to me, he goes, the reason I gave you the role, he goes, I like working with you. I like being around you. You're a chill guy. You're fun to hang out with. I got to do a radio interview with him after the shoot. Like I came in and did a radio interview for a show I was doing at the time, which was really cool. Uh, that he took time. It was a big thing. Uh, but he said to me, he goes, listen, producers just want me to put different extras in these scenes. But you know what's going on in the scene. You're an actor. So you're only going to have two days where you speak. But you're going to have 10 days where you're just sitting in scenes in costume, reacting to what's going on. Cool. Every one of those days that I'm sitting there, I'm getting paid as a full actor. Nice. Wow. So I did like that's 12 amazing. days on that show. And that was like my that's year amazing. on one show. That's a bonus. You know I mean? Yeah. yeah. Bonus. Nice. The down part was, was my mother was in the hospital with cancer at the time. Uh, and Bo Bridges, uh, before he started shooting, Lloyd had just died. Lloyd Bridges had just died. So uh, there was just a moment where Bo and I started talking to each other because I said, listen, would you mind autographing a picture from my mother? She's in the hospital with cancer. And he switched gears immediately. Really? And he sat down and he talked to me and all that. And he said, absolutely, I've been assigned this for your mother. No worries. You know what I mean? So there is a level. You'll always hear me say that Hollywood is full of fucking animals, devil worshippers, and pedophiles. 
Absolutely. But that's modern Hollywood. That's the last 30, 25, 30 years of Hollywood. You get the yeah, old you get the guys from the 70s and before, the guys who came up during the old system of Hollywood. There's a humanity to them you will not find in modern actors. There is a humanity to them because it, it wasn't as much about their egos as it was about this was their job and this is what they did for a living, right? Mm -hmm. They took now, pride in their work. Yeah, they took great pride in their work. Genuine pride. Yeah, where a lot of the younger guys I worked with in the last 10, 15 years, and that's one of the reasons I got out, it was just narcissism. It was just nonstop dealing with narcissists every day, and you get exhausted dealing with them. So it was, there was a number of reasons I got out of the industry, but that was one of them. That was one of the, the sticks that made me go, fuck this, I'm done. But yeah, there, I had some fun. I'll just leave it at that. I had a lot of fun. In the time, I, I spent 20 years in that business, and I had some real, I had some miserable shit, but I had some really, really fun times, too. There we go. Finally talking about my acting career on the channel. Oh, my God. I never... That's super cool. Guys, I'm going to have to bag out because I'm actually sort of 20 minutes past my turn into a pumpkin time. But it was very nice to sort of pop out back. Bear, as always, yeah. thank you so much hey, for being on. I always like to see you, Len. Too. Yeah, nice Continue to have you back more often, Len. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you guys. <laughs> and and, and again, bye, everybody else out there. And we'll talk <laughs> about uh, Heroic Len. So yeah, yeah. Let, let's let's connect to me tomorrow. Yeah. Bye. Bye. See ya. Well, my God, I'm losing guests one by one. Panelists are dying off. Oh, my oh, God. No. Oh, did, my did Dale God. just drop or? Yeah, he sent a private yeah, message. He... Oh, okay. Out of the shit. Okay. I feel bad. Yeah, I guess his internet is crap right now. Absolutely. His internet was pooping. I need to get a drink. Uh, you guys don't burn down the house and don't get me banned while I'm away. <laughs> do, so, do, how, do. so how's the yeah, um, spreadsheet mind. going? <laughs> Um, one of the things I got to ask Bear about is like adding new enhancements. Does that cost anything? Adding or taking away limitations on powers? Does that cost anything? What do you mean? Does it cost? Of course it costs. It, the enhancement lowers a rank. It's a it's a rank shift lower, and a and a limitation is the other way. Yeah, yeah. You can yeah. okay. I because that. That's one thing I got to now, now I know that's for character creation, but what about within gameplay? Is that still the same thing? Well, within gameplay, you kind of have to earn a, an enhancement through power stunts. Okay. And a limitation would be like, you know, somebody cut off your arm. Here's your limitation. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you kind of earn both of them. Okay, so so they're they're earned. They're not necessarily paid for. Well, you can pay for them through your earnings, through your karma points when you're when you're doing your enhancement when you're doing your advancements. You can you can buy certain things and says, but there should be a no, game reason. Wrong. You should well, okay. Do not spend karma on advancements. We specifically made the game not to do that because that was one of the biggest complaints. But I'm the sorry. Game. Yes, we have advancements. You get advancements every game. Yes. There's, so Dan, mm -hmm. me boogie, Dan, my boogie. Go read the goddamn advancement section, and you'll, all the answers to the questions you just asked me are yeah. in the fucking RTFM. Rule. RTFM, baby. RTFM. But yes, if you take an enhancement, it increases. The power's uh, cost by one. So let's say you was going to be remarkable. You're going to spend a remarkable on it, but you want to take an enhancement to make it better. Well, now it costs you an incredible to take it, even though it only may have a remarkable rank. A limitation reduces the cost by one. So let's say I wanted to have it be incredible, but I only had a remarkable left. Well, I'll take it remarkable, but I'll put a limitation on it, and I can bump it up to incredible all of a sudden. Limitations and enhancements normally cannot be purchased or removed after gameplay starts. Okay. But you can, with compelling reason, using advancements and narrator approval. Usually that would be a plot-related thing. Superheroes don't change much unless there's a plot attached to it. What? That's why Spider-Man didn't have his web armor longer than about eight panels. That's a power stunt. Okay. Beast. Yeah. Okay. Because I want to make sure I got that right as far as if they got to spend anything oh. for within yeah. gameplay when... The narrator says, "Okay, this is this part is enhancing it, or it. I got it to where it develops into a power. That that I put in there. Well, you got I just, space to write down power stunts. So, 
Oh yeah, that, that, that's what the separate sheet is for, for the, uh, yeah, but I've, a, is there a way to get the power stunts to be listed under the powers that they're actually a stunt off of? Because that's how it should group because a power stunt is related to a power. That's something you'd have to rearrange. Although I could figure out something. If you could, that'd be great. If not, don't worry about it. It's not important. I also don't know why you put powers on the second page. I think powers should be on the first page because they're the most primary important thing. And then you could put talents and everything else on the second page, but that's a personal choice. I don't think that's a. Well, I, I did. I did the first one as a character sheet. So everything's there on the character sheet. And if you got to define more, the power is more in depth. I put it over there. Hang on. I've got a cat doing an impersonation of a corpse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. My, my dog does that quite often. Well, what did you do? Last time I saw the legs, and I turned, he's just doing this. Oh, like he's like... <laughs> well, we, we actually have uh, kittens again. Oh, my goodness. You have what? On purpose? Uh, kittens again. Oh, no. Uh, well, I mean, our where, where we live in, in the, the, the little corner of the small town that we're in, it seems to be where all the crazy cat people gather. So there's a handful of uh, stray, but not strays, you know, indoor, outdoor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Handful Free of people roaming. don't, yeah, don't, don't get them fixed. And yep. there was two, there, there was a cat. She took a liking to us and our, you know, our porch, our yard, our little area. And so, all right, we'll feed her. She, she come around. Obviously, she wasn't fixed. She had two kittens. Okay, one ended up being a male, another one a female. All right. Um, and, geez, Louise, it was not even six months really? after the kittens were born. She got knocked up again, and the kitten got knocked up. Wow. Beans. Did you mm. go down there and knock up cat's beans? <laughs> and, Stop uh, it, beans. Now I know they that each had four. The, the, the mother and the daughter each had four kittens. Wow. Well, yeah, the daughter, the four kittens, they, they something was wrong. Yeah, they didn't too young. She rejected them. There was a raccoon. There's a raccoon involved. There was injuries three of the four didn't make it the fourth we, we were giving them comfort you know i i, I can't just let them lay around and die you know we, we comfort okay. them for a couple of days as they passed well in, in the interim while these kittens were passing the mother aka grandma grabbed the one kitten right out of my hand and took it in with her litter so we have five kittens. She's actually taken. So we're keeping the, the one for sure. We're, we're yeah. calling that one Miracle. It's it's a miracle. You know, <laughs> we're, we're keeping that one. The other other kittens are up for grabs for who wants them, you know. But, yeah, we got, and, uh, and that's the outside cats. We have four we inside. Can we see pictures of the kittens at some point, please, Carol? I, I will put them on the Discord, yes. Please, they, they are because I swear to God, I'm I'm so desperate to have a not black cat at some point in the near future of my life. Oh well, these <laughs> ones are black and tuxedo, except oh, for tux Miracle. Miracle's tuxes, great. Tuxes are the best. Tuxes have yes. the best personalities of any cat you'll ever meet. Well, if I if I get, we have two of them that are. Yeah, dude, there's no way you're gonna get a kitten to where, where, where we mail them overnight. Where are you? Where are you? What part of the world? <laughs> I'm in Ohio. Yeah, I think it'd be I'll a bit of a trip. Have be a bit of a trip yeah I, I think i'll be fine but i just want to i just want to window shop kittens you know what i mean yeah, yeah they're and their eyes their the, their oh, eyes are just now starting to open oh nice i mean they're yeah, all they are right fresh. they're they're two yeah. weeks old they're nice blue that blue that innocent blue that doesn't stay and then they turn into demon yellow yes yes i'm talking about getting another kitten because you two annoy the fuck out of me and so the other kitten no, I'm getting. I'm, I figured out the plan. Get a female. Get a female. I got two boys. Get a female. She'll yeah. run. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, you have better luck with that one than you well, did last time. 
what are you talking about? The last one lived for nine No, years. no, I'm talking about these two. One of them was supposed to be. Oh, yeah, yeah. It'll be actually a female, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it'll actually, yeah. Yeah. No, the, 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 the indoor are great. cats. Sorry, the indoor ahead. cats. The indoor cats that we have. Um three females, one male. But it's funny because they are the two females are near identical gray. And then the male and the other female are near identical. Um, I don't want to say tux. They're black and white, but they're more of the um, uh, a piebald, more of a spotted cow, black and white, you know, and they're mm -hmm. almost identical, which, which is funny. You know, they're, they're, they're pairs. They're, I they're guess. white with black spots versus black with white. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, there and and the only the, the the best way we can tell the the white and black ones is the ears. The male has black ears and the the female's got white. Neat. <laughs> That's very cool. So I got cool. a new light, and it's uh, one of these. Uh huh. Ooh. So I think I think I should use this for uh, fantasy games and just have it down here, like I'm. Yeah. By the, camp. the the campfire, yeah, yeah exactly. There you go. Get it, get it kind of under the mud. Yeah, like kind of. Yeah. yeah. So you're doing that sort of thing. That'd be kind of fun. Problem is, this thing is so goddamn bright, it whites me out a little bit. But they're cool. I got two. They were two packed for well, fifteen. You bucks. got two. We'll put one there. Put one where it's at, and put one on. on uh, the, the other one's in my bedroom lamp, man. I took a nap today for lunch i closed the windows closed the blind my room was pitch black but i had this flickering lamp beside me i slept like a baby man it was awesome, it was nice. awesome. the only thing you needed then was a white noise maker it's trying green. to set up a devil's three-way with no shadow what are you talking about shadow with the cats no god no what the hell these boys are fixed but uh yeah ours ours are fixed yeah but a female would run them and that's what I need. I need a female to run them. Oh, I should do this and then like read ghost stories. That's what I should do. Do a whole there channel where I just read ghosts. Do this on Bear's Cave. Just read ghost stories. Go on to Reddit and find all those ghost story green text stuff or off of uh, 4chan and then just read them. That could be fun. I wonder if people would tune in for that. Yeah. People will probably tune in for that because I see those channels doing fairly well for themselves. Mm, don't know, don't know, don't know, don't know. Th there's channels of people reacting to people reacting to people reacting there. So it's reaction. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you're reacting to somebody else's crap. Why don't you actually make your own content? Yeah. You know. So, yeah, Squirrel, uh, what's the next game you're purchasing, Squirrel? What's your next big purchase? Heroic. Uh, He's already backed that. Yeah, come on. By the I way, I'm it. giving away Bunny's Unnatural Selection on Friday. I've put all the members' names on a wheel, and I'm going to spin, and your name's on it, Squirrel, so you might wind up winning a game that's going to need space in your house again. And you can't well, just give this funny. one away to someone else. The deal, the deal No, I'm no, no, no. Is, there's, there's certain games that I, they're keepers regardless. The deal I'm doing for this is I got the, the special edition early, um, early pledge version. So basically... Friday, I'm going to draw the winner. The winner has to get me their name and address as fast as possible in an email address, and then I'm going to give that to Bunny and Zane, and they're going to change it to you guys, and you guys pay the shipping to get it shipped to you, and that'll be that. Oh, look. The cunt St. Germain is here. <laughs> Methuselah. Hmm. Howdy, folks. What's up, hey, Shadow? Hey, hey. How you doing, man? Pretty good, pretty good. Had a busy day. Uh, Jackie and I had that photo shoot for your thing. And the other thing, and uh, that was a pain in the ass. That was oh, a thing. Hung around tonight. Jesus Christ. Bunny was going to wear a skin tight thing, and he's been taking photos of things. What are all these things people are doing? Uh, the thing. Fair enough. <laughs> I wonder if I can make this. Give me a second, guys. I'm going to see if I can bring up the brightness on this. With hey, the... uh, Squirrel, Jackie loved your uh, the thing you sent him. Uh, but he wants to know, uh, how's your singing voice? Uh, well, I can kind of do a sort of Johnny Cash kind of singing. And I can um, uh, maybe a little bit of, of a, a, a Willie Nelson kind of, you know, hello, wow. 
that kind of that's George Strait. Sort of. All right, don't be picky, Dan. Jesus Christ. Are Spread you sure he was the there? first one that did it? Yeah, well. So uh you did a voice for him as well. I did too. It was fun. Nice helping out kids, isn't it, there, Squirrel? You're on mute. You muted. you muted yourself, Squirrel. Oops, okay. sorry. It's it is. It's 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 fun. Did you change your microphone? Your voice just suddenly went. Yeah, I'm. Something went there wrong we with. Trying okay. to figure it out. Well, then you figure that so, out. Pardon moi. Was it part uh, of I you? might mute. I might mute off and on trying to figure this out. No worries. No worries. Ooh, allergies coming. What allergies you got coming? No, uh, the pollen's been horrible this year. Yeah, North Carolina is just smashing us. Oh, God, yeah. You know, I really sometimes just thank Jesus, I rock Muhammad Izod for being Viking ancestry. No lactose intolerance. No IBS. No fucking allergies. <laughs> like, it's just fucking amazing. I didn't have allergies I, I either levels until I lived great. down here. Hmm? I didn't have allergies either until I lived down here for... Yeah, but that's because it was hiding in your genetics until you went to a pollen zone. I grew up with a grandmother who had an immense garden. We were bombarded by pollen every spring because her garden oh. was huge. Christ, we had about 100 feet of lilac bushes. Oh, yeah. Like a feet it, tall right in front of the house, you know? Yeah, I think if uh, I went up to Wisconsin, all that pollen I'm used to. Yeah. It's the stuff down here. And then. This, so, this how long have you been down there for? Uh, from 19 until 21 okay. and then right, came right. back at 23. Yeah. Cause then you should be adjusted by now. What the hell are you talking about? This is, this is, this is local, local this honey. Local honey. That's yeah, true too. Man. Yeah. Local that honey helps. will help. Local honey is an absolute, does this sound better? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Local honey is an absolute. There you go. You're all. What, what are you talking? Who are you talking to, Shadow? Uh, he said squirrel. Carol. Yeah. Local honey is a. Oh, Carol. okay. Sorry. We can barely yeah. hear you, Shadow. That's why. Really? Yeah. Well, I can. Can you guys yeah, hear him good? Rather faint. Now he's, he's faint, he's but I can make out what he's saying. Fair enough. Okay. Now, what is this devil's three way you were going on about, Shadow? You're two boy cats and a girl cat. They, they don't have balls. It's not going to stop him from trying. And, and Misty, it, Misty has no interest in anything because Misty never dropped, never. Misty's a bi fucking gender fluid, non binary trans cat. Do you not know this story, yeah. Shadow? No. I wish people know the Shadow. Uh, I love telling this story. So when I got the boys, I was told I'm getting two male kittens. I said, okay, great. Took them to the vet for their first checkup. And I said, open the thing. So which one do you want? And the vet goes, oh, I want the pretty one, which is Misty, whose name was Spooky at the time. So she takes him out and she's like, this isn't a boy. I'm like, yes, it is. She's like, look, and we look, and there's not, there's no testicles. We're like, oh, I'm like, oh, fuck, I got a female? And he's really furry, so like, we didn't go digging for like vagina, right? It was just like, okay, I got a female. Fuck, well, I guess you're not spooky. I guess you'll be misty now, because that's a good name. A couple months later, bring them back for their second checkup, and their next round of shots, and it's a different vet. And she's like, okay, so we got a girl and a boy, and then she takes Misty out, checks, and she goes, this is a boy. And we're like, what? I'm like, this, no, it's a girl. The other vet said so. She goes, look, and we look, and sure enough, there's a little scrotum there. We're like, oh, my God. Okay, you fucking gender-fluid, non-binary asshole. Great. Beans, boy all the way. Take him to get fixed at whatever age it was, six months or whatever the age is he taken in. And uh, we drop him off at the, the clinic, and then we come back around to pick him up. They say, be back at this time. You'll be able to pick up your cats. Great. Come back. How'd it go? Went really well. They're both fine. We have to charge you an extra 50 bucks for Misty. Why? His testicles never dropped, so we had to open him up like a female and go in to get them. Ah, so he's trans. <laughs> so Misty is a gender-fluid, non-binary trans cat. Do you understand? Do now. There you go. So he's not going to be humping anything. He doesn't care. Beans, maybe, but you know, you get, a, you get the right female cat, she'll put him in his place real quick, and then he'll be like, well, that's enough of that then, I guess. We'll see. Well, I mean, no, like just, you said, Beans no. doesn't have his beans, so he don't care. <laughs> yeah, beans don't have no beans. Alright, hang on. 
Uh, Bunny says, so I found out what Mimic the guy wants. He wants me to try a Hago or Hukau. And then, he's, then she says, degenerates. I don't know what that means. What is an a Hago or a, a Hukau? What is that? Do I want to know? And thank Probably you. Not. Good lighting. It's I can tell stories around the fire of the olden times. But uh, what the hell is a Hago yeah. and a Hukau? Yeah. Now I'm not know. Googling either of them. I'm not Googling. No, no, no. I oh, fell no. for the party. I'm not falling for this. <laughs> no, no. Especially if You're it comes not. from Justin. Especially, if, especially if Bunny says to Google it. Really? Chris Nerd, I sent you the link for the chat. You're not here. You don't get to have comments until you join the chat. Anime sex face. Okay. <laughs> who cow right. is a sex not face? Googling shit. Not Googling right. shit. Who cow? Let's I'm go. Who cow? Yep. We'll do an image yeah. search. Oh, God. Well, it's just a chick with big tits dressed like a cow. Whatever. I mean, that's boring. <laughs> you guys forget. I used to bounce in strip clubs. I did uh, bodyguard work for sex workers. I worked in a porn store. I'm I'm not some I did bitch. Dumb. I'm not a prude, but you know, I just there's oh, certain places you this just is don't what look at. Is. Yeah, yeah, okay. I didn't know that had a name. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, there's a picture of Belle Delphine doing it. Nice. Okay. Yeah. It's that stupid cross-eyed tongue out look. Ah. Okay, well, that's dumb, and I'm never making that mistake again. <laughs> well, Dungeon Damsel, you are officially out of the trust circle now. <laughs> hey, Dungeon Damsel. Congrats uh, on your uh, your seedlings. Seedlings? She's a mom now. Dungeon Damsel's a mom now? Well, of, you know, plants. She, she seedlings. Seeds. Yeah, seedlings. I don't even want to know how you know this. I just I, saw I, it on YouTube. No, no, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. What part of I don't want to know immediately turns into an explanation? I swear to God, man, people are crazy. I'm going to have to send him the short. Nerds, are you going to join us or not? we got about uh, 15 minutes left. You can come in and get some good zingers in on us. Yeah. So who watched the um, Tuesday night or Tuesday night uh Random character generation we did last night. Hello, nerds, nerd. Well, I did, obviously. He is sexy mimic, too. Jesus. <laughs> nerds. They never gave me the choice, but I would. Nerds! What the fuck is wrong with you, nerds? <laughs> is there a word for it? Like, is there a medical condition we can apply to you? Other than Marine? Uh, my, my doctor's had a few, but I don't like to brag about it. <laughs> Don't like <laughs> <to pray. laughs> funny shit, nerds, nerd. Funny shit. Bear, any word oh, joining us on Monday? Is nerds are joining us on Monday? Or who else is? Anybody? Uh, Coco's going to be there. Oh, cool. And I don't know who else. Maybe Walter MC. I don't know. We'll see. Sorry, I'm trying to. Fill up my new vape, and it's not like the old one when it comes to filling it, so I gotta actually pay attention. The old one had an auto stop, you couldn't overfill it. This one you can overfill, and then you take that first hit, and it's nothing but vape juice in your mouth. Mmm, delicious! <laughs> delicious, oh, good old vape juice. Mm. It's good vape, though. 40 bucks. I'm happy with it. I see these guys with these ones that are like, you know, they look like fucking carburetors, you know, like they got like pieces. They look like fucking George Lucas starships. You know what I mean? I'm just like, why? Why do you need this much? How small is your cock? You know, that you need this. Like, really? They bellow smoke and they do. Oh, my God. Man. Who can make the biggest vape? It's like, oh, Jesus. You're like fucking. It's like when we were 12 hanging around behind the, the fucking town hall smoking cigarettes, seeing who could blow the biggest ring, you know? Like, Jesus Christ. What is it with this generation of men being stuck in adolescence? What is this? What happened? What did I miss? Was there a meeting? No one believes there's any future anyways, so you might as well stay a kid till the pending apocalypse comes. Okay, y'all can go put that shit in a box and put it under your bed. I'm Gen X, lady. We grew up under the threat of the nuclear Armageddon. Oh, yeah, I was waiting for the purple we light. Were, we were latching. We we drank out of and the we were latchkey kids yeah. taking care of ourselves, oh, and we didn't have anything. Absolutely, we helmets. 
I was I was cooking and removing blood stains by the age of eight years old on my own. I go. cooked to keep myself alive, and I removed the blood stains to keep myself alive. How dare I stain my clothing yeah. with blood? Yeah, yeah. My Thank mom's you, favorite phrase: "What are you doing inside?" <laughs> my mom's yeah, favorite exactly. phrase was, "I'll give you a quarter if you all go play in traffic." That was my mother's favorite thing to say to us when we were annoying her. My sister was 12 years older than me, and and when I was four and five, she'd throw the Frisbee. We'd play Frisbee, yeah. and she'd slowly move it closer and closer to the road to get me to go in front of cars. My mom would get annoyed with so me. So you like she'd, this, right? She'd hand yeah. me a $20 bill. Are. She'd, be like, she'd be like, go get me a carton of cigarettes, pick up whatever you want with the change, and do not come back for an hour. So yeah. I'd go get her carton of cigarettes, and I had enough left over to get some fried chicken. So I'd go get some fried chicken and eat my fried chicken yep. and be all happy and then go home. It was great. Yep. Go go buy a 12-pack of beer. Download. Okay. Hang on a second. No, <clears throat> you are wrong, but that's okay. That's the problem with this generation. They think they're in the, the fucking, like, even him, he's millennial. They all think, they, they have no clue what we went through in the 70s and 80s. Zero yeah. fucking clue. Yeah, every other generation thinks they're the one who had it hardest, but it's your generation that's right about it. No, that's not what we're saying. We're well, not saying I don't we had, think it we had it hard. We, we grew yeah. up under the constant daily threat. The Cuban Missile Crisis was a thing. Annihilated. We yep. had drills. We had fucking maps to fallout shelters. We had they programmed that TV was nothing but that. The day after threads, this, that, and the other thing. It was a constant fucking. Every look at how many fucking Aces videos. How yeah. many Aces videos have an atomic explosion in them? Yep. You Mickey know? Mouse ga gas masks. And you know? not only that, our our at least that's uh, a cool way to go out. Not 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 using it as a, as a, as a bad word, but our boomer parents like get out of here. Our parents go are fend boomers. for yourself. Our go, older go fend siblings for are yourself. boomers. No, no, our older siblings are the boomers. Our parents were silent generation. My, well, my, yeah, you're right. Yeah. right. My, so father, was, my father was born in 38. My mother was born, I think, in 40, right? Or 42 yeah. or something like that. 41. Well, my mom is 83, 84. So, but anyways, our, our parents, you know, go, 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 live, survive, get out of here. Don't come Don't back when the streetlights come I got on. better things to do yeah. than. than yeah. 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 In the summer, up north, was, uh, was inspired by that threat. The Watchmen, that's, that's what it's all about. So, veteran, you can't be a boomer in the 40s unless it's post-1945 because the term baby boomer means the baby boom after World War II, sir. So it's like 45 to 60, that type of range. Because my sister Stephanie is a uh, boomer, and she's like the last year of boomers before like they stop. Or she's like in the last cusp of boomers. So it's like 45 to 65 or something like that. I don't Whereas know. my Stephanie. parents were the first year. Oh yeah, your parents are so that so that's the thing though. If you look at the generation gap, people who are born on the the brackets tend to embody the traits of the generation that came after them and the one before. They're like weird cusp children, right? My, my parent, so, my parents are like that. They were born in forty three. My yeah. dad's from Vietnam. Yeah, you know, so so they got that silent boomer. Not, not in Canada, man. In Canada, we didn't have a lot of teenage pregnancy. <laughs> we had it, but not like to the level you guys in the states seem to have had it. It was weird. Well, you guys didn't have drive-in theaters? Oh, yeah. But, uh, you yeah. know, we also had, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Propriety. Um, it's, listen, <laughs> I'm not saying it, doesn't, it didn't happen, but given of all my friends growing up, I'd say maybe five, maybe five, had parents that were 10 years younger than my parents. You know what I mean? Most of them, they were all the same age as my parents or within a couple of years of them. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just a weird thing. It's it's a Canadian thing. Maybe it could be a Quebec thing too. I don't know. Uh, but my generation was the last generation of uh, in Quebec of the big families because they used to have nine and ten children in the French families. Like it was crazy how many kids. Even they had. in the city. And yeah, even in the city. And then in the seventies, they started slowing down a lot because they had the Quiet Revolution, where the female started to come into power in Quebec, and the male was pushed down. And as a result of that, the the child numbers dropped off, Catholicism started dying, all that stuff started changing. You know what I mean? They should have never taken propriety off the market. It was a really good product. <laughs> 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 ah, good one, Justin. 
Very good, baby. Very good. I like that one. Now, by the 80s, I was starting to see people who had divorced parents, and that was really rare in the 70s. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And then then by the 90s, everybody I would meet that was like 10 years younger than me or five years younger than me, their parents were all divorced or they were single moms or whatever. But it's funny. The only people I ever know who went to jail, all single moms. That's a great song. Imagine that. Exactly, Grizzly. Or as... uh, as uh, what's his name said, uh, Freddie Mercury, for we who grew up strong and proud beneath the shadow of the mushroom cloud. You know, it's just the way it is, man. Convinced our voices can't be heard. We just want to scream it louder and louder. Gen X is a very different beast. And most people who study the generational gaps and all this type of stuff constantly come back to that. And it's no joke. Like, I've literally seen the news reports where they, because they sometimes call us the forgotten generation, where they literally went, Baby boomers, millennials, Generation Z. Like, it's like they just, like, in their chart of generations, they just forget Gen yeah. X exists. Well, well, yeah. well <laughs> and, and you know what? Uh, we just, no. Leave us yeah, we, alone. Yeah, Go we're okay out. with it. Leave us alone. Leave us alone. Yeah, Get us yeah, out of here. Well, if, if you take a look yeah. at the. Stop the remaking the generation, shit poorly. The yeah, generation exactly. of World War I. Mm-hmm. And Gen X are are basically the same co- cohorts. Just which which generation? Which cohort? One, the one that fought World War One. Oh, they, so they were considered yeah, the lost there's a, there's generation. There's a term for them. I can't remember what the term the is. The lost yeah. generation. The lost yeah. generation. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's weird. So when you get into this, you get into the whole thing of the um, the, the 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 turnings. Have you guys learned about the turnings, the fourth turning, and all that stuff. The guys yeah. who the guys who created the generation stuff. Exactly, Stroud and Howe, they talk about the turnings, right? And we are, this generation, Gen X, we are, we're the nomads. You know, we're the generation that just goes and does whatever it needs to do and that's thing. And the nomad generation exists in all of these 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 um, quadrants, or I guess whatever, these four groupings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The millennials are, the, no, the it's great. Generation Z. Generation Z. Z is the one that saves us after the fourth turning, right? The boomer, and, they're the boomer equivalent nope, of the boomers. They're not the boomers. They're the ones after. They're, so, fuck, I gotta look it up. Hang on. There's a thing. It's a thing, but they're they don't use those terms for them. Um, it, it's it's weird. You you have the hunters. No 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 no. The stress how generational theory. Uh, boom boom boom. So they have the boomers and all that fun stuff. Then we get into the turnings, and we have the high, the awakening, the unraveling, and the crisis. Right. Mm-hmm. And then within each of those, we have a thing. So the awakening is the second turning. The second turning is the awake, the high. Okay. According to stress, how the first turning is the high, which usually occurs after a crisis. During the high, institutions are strong. Individualism is weak. Society is confident about where they want to go collectively. And those outside of the majoritarian center often feel stifled by conformity. And that's um, right up until, so that's 1946 till Kennedy's assassination is the high. Then you have the awakening. The second turning is an awakening. This is an era where institutions are attacked in the name of personal and spiritual autonomy. When so- just, just when society is reaching a high tide of public progress, people are suddenly tired of social discipline and want to recapture a sense of self-awareness, spirituality, and personal authenticity. Young activists look back to previous high as an era of cultural and spiritual poverty. So this would be the consciousness revolution that happened right up until the early tax from the 60s, mid-60s to the tax revolts of the 1980s. Then we have the unraveling, which is the third turning. The mood of this era, they say, is in many ways opposite of the high. Institutions are weak and distrusted, while individualism is strong and flourishing. The high comes after crises is when societies want to coalesce and build to avoid death and destruction. Unravelings come after awakenings when society wants to atomize and enjoy. So that would be from the 80s until currently the culture war. Then comes the crisis, which is the fourth turning, which we're heading into. Well, we're in it now, and hopefully we'll get out of it. They say 2030 is when it's supposed to be the, the end of the fourth turning. This is an era of destruction, often involving war, revolution, in which institutional life is destroyed and rebuilt in response to a perceived threat to the nation's survival. After the crisis, civic authority revives, cultural expression redirects towards community purpose, and people begin to locate themselves as members of a larger group. So the children in the unraveling become the leaders who take the crisis and make the crisis better. Like they come out of the crisis and they make, so they grew up, they're born in the unraveling, they grow up through the crisis and then they take power in the new high and turn society into something. So look at what that, who was in charge in the 1950s? Post-World War II, The greatest generation. The greatest generation, right? They were in charge. So they fought the crisis 
and then they tried to build a better society. Well, they are the equivalent of Generation Z today, or Zoomers. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see what comes out of it if we survive. That's the question. Now, look, this can be argued, debunked. You can go against it. And the archetypes are prophet, nomad, hero, and artist. Uh, so the prophet uh, generation enters childhood during a high, nomad during an awakening, which is us, Gen X, mm -hmm. hero during an unraveling, which is the millennials, and the artist, they come into their childhood during a crisis. So that's the generation Z today. That's like Jackie's younger than, you know, a little bit younger than Jackie and those sort of people. Jackie's on the cusp of the hero generation and the uh, artist generation. Now, look, all of this stuff can be, you know, argued and because it's not science, it's yeah. philosophy, right? But it's fascinating. Yep. It's really fascinating. It, yeah, it's a so sociology, got, sociological yeah, you, study. you got the lost generation. There is always this one generation in this four cycle that is just, no one gives a shit about them. <laughs> like, it's just they vanish into the woodwork. Well, and, and, and the thing is, they're the ones that lead through the crisis. They're the ones that mm -hmm. give it stability, that take charge. Uh, Harry Truman was part of that. Eisenhower. Yeah. Uh, all, all the generals, most of Jet Patton, all those folks fought as young men in World War I. And they were the generals in World War II. Yeah. So that means basically the Gen Xers who fought in the first Gulf War, the one back in the 90s, should be the ones that are going to be the leaders in the upcoming crisis. We'll see if that works out. A lot of them died. Okay. So good question from Shadow. Top three favorite bands. Squirrel, go. Well, I like Glass Harp. I like, oh, man, there's so many. That's just a tough question. Um, I, I'm listening to, a, a, well, Glass Glass Harp. There's a, a group I'm listening to, Glass Beam, Glass Beams. And um, I, I will... I, yeah. Um, and glass we'll, is third. We've, we've got it locked in. I know, right? Um, I, I don't know. It's it's a hard, it floats. I mean, with right. music with me, it, it floats around. All right, Shane? Pretty much um, the three bands that I've liked, all of their music, except for maybe the one-off, would be Rush, The Chieftains, and Clannad. Interesting. Mm. Ethan's and Collad. So that's some Celtic shit going on there. Well, Rush used Dan? to be my, my top three. Uh, but... Say again, Shadow? Rush used to be in my top three, but they got a little too preachy for me. Yeah, the oh, newest yeah. stuff. Uh... Um, Stevie Ray Vaughan and Double, Double Trouble. Trouble. Sorry, who's Stevie Ray? No, not favorite albums. Favorite band. So you're, oh, Stevie Ray Vaughan with the Double Trouble band. Okay. Right. Um... Van Halen. All of them? Even Van yes, Hagar? I, even Van Hagar. Okay. I, I, Love comes walking in. Yep. Um, that That's my 80s roots right there. Mm -hmm. um, and I I did love uh, Foreigner and Lou Graham. Okay. Uh, Lou Graham's solo stuff. So. Okay. Fair enough. Shadow? Lois the Cloth. Golden Earring, Police. Okay. Mm. Nerds Nerd? Metallica, Megadeth, Arcway Drive. There you go. I used to party with almost all those guys you just mentioned. Yeah, <laughs> um, okay. Uh, for me, it would be Strange Advance, The Midnight, and... Trying to think of my music collection, who shows up a lot on my music collection? Tears for Fears. There you go. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah, that, Tears for Fears. If that's what I was going through too. It's like, okay, what can I? What the albums are? And... Now, my favorite cool. album isn't by any of those three, weirdly yeah. enough. But you know, yeah. there's so much. It's yeah, three favorite music is is for me. Oh. It's it's so changing. I subscribe to the opinion that music is the glue that holds the world together. Always. Uh, and I'm going to put Nerds yeah. up there so we can see that lovely mimic a little bit better because it doesn't <laughs> got the white behind it. And yeah. it looks like it wants there to eat Nerds head, so that works out well. Um, but I don't have any band at all that I like everything they've done. 
Uh, so my music list is very eclectic. Like I think most people's these days, it's just, you know, there's classical, there's rap, there's country, there's pop, there's new wave, there's metal, there's this, there's that, you know, just the way it is. Yeah. My Pandora list is crazy. Yeah. Armin Dick, Armin Drick put it best. Our choice of music tells us all that we are old. I like the midnight, sir. I'm not old. The midnight is a young people music. That's right. You guys know oh. the Midnight? Have you checked out the Midnight? No. They're like a sort of a synth wave, retro wave band, but they're really good. So um, I guess I'm old because they're doing old style music. So there we go. Uh, there you go. I, I did find a Broken Peach. They're a ba band out of Spain, and they do a lot of uh, covers of 80s bands. Okay. Oh, neat. So, oh, my cousin's on. Your cousin's on? Yeah, I don't know if you, guys, ah, there I don't know we if you guys could just hear that just a minute ago. The boy, my, my son and his friends are downstairs playing Dungeons and Dragons. Got Sweet, cool. Board. I just I just hear um sh shouting. You probably yeah, I don't know why you guys couldn't hear it. Someone rolled the 20 and I could hear it all the way up here. You know <laughs> what that was. Nice. You know what I mean? Nice. That's good. That's very That's good. It's all about guys. Good stuff. Natural twenty. Well, good listen, stuff, good I'm, I'm I'm doing a thing with uh, uh, Mr. Welch. Uh, he's got a bunch of us. He's got fifty channels, and we're all going to do a little three minute blurb about you know D and D and what we like about D and D. And I listen. I'll talk shit about D and D until the end of time. But there are some things about D and D that I will always like. There's always going to be a very strong nostalgia feeling that I'm going to get with D and D. Uh, and you know, I can find nice things to say about it. Even the current Watsy fantasy role playing game edition. That's what they're you know, playing downstairs. Five E, yeah. yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it. Make them happen, especially right? for new players. If it gets them at the better. table, if it gets them at the table, and and helps them, you know, embrace that hobby and and bring it into the next generation, that's that's what it's all about. But well, I, I find out that it's not necessarily the game system; it's who you got playing at the table, and and the memories that you make a, with the story. I'm playing a 5e campaign. Uh, there are just three of us and two players and a GM. And so the two two of us players are playing two characters. And they're all half-brothers. Their mother is a prostitute out of Baldur's Gate. It, it has been utterly hilarious, absolute fun, playing, you know, basic teenagers going on adventures. You know, we are seasoned adventurers. Stuff like that, and it's just been absolute fun. The it's images characters. are cool too. Yeah, you know what? I, I I was listening to the DM. It's not my son, and uh, the kids of uh, the characters are basically like fighting a ha uh, some sort of hag, right? And one of one of the kids shoots the hag with uh, an arrow, and he says, "She she pulls out the arrow and looks at it like you just handed her divorce papers." <laughs> <laughs> We're in good hands, guys. We are in good hands. Oh my! Nice. Oh, that's Tell me you don't want to use that someday. Tell me you don't want to use that. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's a good one. That is, that is a good one. That 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 is a classic. I guarantee you, those guys at that table we'll are going to remember that, that yep. into their forties and fifties, oh, and they will use it in other games. Especially after one of them gets handed divorce papers. You had me. They also had one of those natural 20 moments. Like I said, guys, the hobby's in good hands. We may not, you know, love the addition or whatever, but you know what? They're down there. They're doing the thing. They're having yeah. fun. I, I couldn't be prouder. But, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, God bless. That's awesome. The, the best thing Watsy ever did was try to trash the OGL because it got other people to play other games. Yeah. It's it's kind of funny. Did you guys see uh, Questing Beast's uh, video on that? Maybe. Yes. I, I, I like his stuff, but I, I don't watch him as much as I probably should. Too busy he did watching. a whole thing on... Um, on uh, the Kickstarters and backer kits, and like, yeah, the, what was being, what was the the lion's share of what was being done? And there's a real strong OSR boom going on right now, huge, where, huge, massive boom. And um, you know, 
That's something. I'm tired of six stats, D20s, levels, classes. I'm tired of it right now, but, you know, it doesn't mean I'm going to be tired of it forever. It just means no. right now I'm tired of it, you know? Yeah, same same here. I mean, listen, we cut our teeth on that. Yeah. Okay? We, we cut our teeth on that. I mean, pretty much we had old man, I cut my teeth on that, that, trick. Well, well, <laughs> that, 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 yeah. That's what that's what there was. We didn't have a choice, but regardless, we cut our teeth on that. So we're always going to want to go back to it in some form or fashion. But I I agree with Bear. I really enjoy class less, level less, more skill based type systems. Well, I, I'm I'm I, sick I, of the hero's I, journey. You know, I to like go it. from first level to whatever. Right there. I'm an older there. guy. I like playing some character with depth to them already. Yeah. And you know, because I've lived a life. Exactly. I don't have I don't have to play, you know, the, the zero, zero to hero. hero. I, I don't I, mind the zero to hero if you don't have a class and a level. You you, you the zero to hero doesn't necessarily it applies, but it doesn't, or it doesn't, but it does. I don't know. It, it, for me, it, because it, I'm, I'm, I'm no after a while, you just get, you just get. I just got sick and tired of it because it's okay. Roll up your stats, your first level. Oh, great! So you know, a rat can kill me. Yay! Yeah, it, yeah. I got well, one spell. So yeah. this is the well, thing. And, and, and I don't want to play Rat Catcher Jones. I don't want to play. I'm a brave hero going off into the world. I must go into the sewers and kill rats. I must go into the cellar and kill rats. I'm a, I want to fucking play fantasy adventure. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to be fighting orcs and goblins and, you know, slaying demons and taking on the evil overlord. That's what I want to fucking do. Yeah. And I, and I don't need, yeah. I don't, I don't want to wait like two or three years before it gets good. And there's a game yeah. out there that, that does that right out of the chute. I'll keep you guys posted. Um, I, I, I've, I've been so lucky to be able to play. Are you, are you going to try and sell Arduin on us again? Not right now. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I, I Not today. Lucky, Tomorrow, maybe. I've been so lucky to be able to play this game for you know forty plus years. <laughs> you name it, I have done it. I have, I have had years of my life where I played more than I actually went to work. If you know he says I mean? Gerb, I'm going to kick him out of the chat. Go ahead. What game oh, are you talking about? No, 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 no. What game no. are you talking about? Oh, I was talking about Arduin, but I was. Of course he was. This fucking this is an Arduin addict over here, man. Hey, Mr. good friend, though. It's Harn Master for me. It's Harn. My man. Harn Master. My man. Sergeant Dan. Arduin didn't really make it past the Rocky Mountains, so a lot of you folks really had no chance to get it. Um, oh, but it was. Hello. Fellow heart enthusiast, Sergeant Dan. I even wrote then an article from Columbia Games. Nice. Cool. Uh, the uh, Seafarer Ebonus order for Ilver. Nice. Yep. I have. I own every physical copy of Harn awesome. in their library. Well, my wife just tapped me for date night, so I am out of here. Y'all have fun, no. though. Enjoy. Bye. <laughs> Hasta la gonorrhea. <laughs> no. no. Well, it's after 10 here in the east, so that means I got to wrap this up and head to bed. Thanks for hanging out, guys. I really appreciate Anytime, it. Bear. Not problem, Bear. And for Mercer for stopping hey, by nice and for Dale you, and Lenny being well, here. Uh, Dane and Sean. Yep. Oh, you never met Dan and Shane before? Nope. Sorry. Not on oh, the screen. Dang, no. yep. hey, how you doing? Pretty yeah, good. First you know, time we, we, we literally live down the road from each other. About hour two hours oh two you're hours. a california guy no 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 him and Steve shane and oh, 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 oh they're carolingians yeah, nice gotcha gotcha <laughs> for a second i thought you were going to say texas and then i'd be like well i'll see you in a couple years that's where i'm headed but carolina is definitely a little bit closer than california Bezos. all right well thanks everybody for hanging out thank you for being here in the chat and all that fun stuff so we will say peace love geek and uh Tomorrow night, I'm supposed to be playing with Cody if Fungar makes it. So uh, hopefully we'll have a game on Cody's channel tomorrow night. And then we'll Friday night, we'll be back up. here keep for some uh, Palladium Fantasy. And yes, keep Hungar in your thoughts, please and please, please. Uh, oh, yes. But, uh, there we go. See ya. Bye-bye now. Fun.